I think that we can start. So first of all, good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to CNR. Uh, good afternoon also to all people connected uh, in Zoom. Uh, I am Pasquale Pagano, uh, acting as a scientific and administrative uh, coordinator and main contact point with the European Commission. So it's an honor and, and a pleasure to host the Bolkulaut kickoff meeting uh, at our headquarters here in Pisa. This, uh, this meeting marks the confirmation of an excellent collaboration that we have with uh, uh, many of you and kick off clearly new partnership that will make Blue Cloud stronger, more efficient, available to our marine community. So from now on, clearly the CNR, and I personally will support you in all your uh, research activities in the project and in the exploitation of the Blue Cloud virtual research environment. I will be your proxy and the CNR team will support your activity in such a way that all together can work you know, to give strength to Blue Cloud and confirm its role as thematic kiosk dedicated to marine science. Um, we will start with uh, our, you know, the welcome from the director of my institute, Roberto Scopigno, and then we will uh, have an introduction of the project from our project coordinator, Sara Pitanet. And finally, you know, our technical coordinator, Dick, will also welcome you to this uh, project. So let's start, Roberto, the floor is yours. And clearly, so thank you all, enjoy this meeting. So welcome again to everybody. I'm very honored to be part of the inaugural event of this important project, Blue Cloud 2026. You are hosted by the Italian National Research Council, which is the main multidisciplinary research institution in Italy. And uh, I will try to be very brief. I will just say you a few words to introduce both to the hosting institution and to recognize and underline the importance of your work and uh, your project. I am Roberto Scopigno, director of ISTI. ISTI means it's an acronym and means Institute on Computer Science and Technologies. It's the larger research institute uh, devoted to computer science at CNR with around 250 uh, staff. Um, going back uh, to Blue Cloud 2026, I am very honored to open the kickoff event and very proud that this key initiative is co coordinated by CNR. All of you, much better than me, knows the importance of increasing our knowledge on the status of our planet. In this time where climate change and its effects are the main issue for our civilization. This is a domain where science has an essential role since the only way to find solution to the current pressing issues is to understand the phenomena and to devise new technologies and processes to mitigate or invert the climate change. Politics obviously also have a key role, but science is, in my opinion, even more important because it has to produce scientific evidence to indicate the road to be taken and support, hopefully, an effective political decision making. Therefore, it's extremely wise that the EC and DG Research and Innovation have decided to fund several actions on these teams. The project starting today is the successor of a pilot, also called Blue Cloud, which had a seminar role and demonstrated the potential impact of an open infrastructure support. Blue Cloud 2026 focuses on oceans and inland waters, touching many different aspects of these wide and complex ecosystems. Blue Cloud plans to offer open and seamless access to services for storage, management, analysis, and reuse of research data, including analytical and computing services. It will design and support data discovery and data access services, virtual research environments, virtual labs, and many other services, including training. The co-coordination role of ISTI is the result of a peculiar evolution of my institute. 
We are a research institution organized with several disciplinary research groups, some of them deeply related to the themes of interest of Blue Cloud. Just to mention you a few, we are working on computer vision and AI technologies to analyze, classify, and understand remote sensing data, as well as methodology based on data science to understand and monitor the condition of fisheries or to cope with the detection and quantification of microplastics in oceans. Even more central to the vision of Blue Cloud, ISTI has a strong commitment towards the design and management of data science infrastructures with a dedicated research lab active for 20 years uh, so far. ISTI is also deeply involved with uh, the open air infrastructure, EOSC, and the transition towards open science. These activities have been also very recently further funded by the Italian Recovery and Resilience Plan Three important projects have been secured by ISTI on the infrastructure call issued by the Italian Research Ministry, and these projects are supporting a major investment to enforce and strengthen our D4 Science platform, allowing us to redesign our computing infrastructure and to hire personnel dedicated to infrastructure management, to its further development and to research. Thus, thanks to these funds, we, we will be even more effective in our participation to Blue Cloud 2026. To conclude, it's my great pleasure to wish you a, su a successful work. Your work should have a great impact for our future, and thus we are looking at it with great hope and trust. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Scopigno, for this introduction. Thanks again to CNR. And I'd like to thank actually, to start actually by thanking also those that are helping behind the scene for the organization of this kickoff, since it's always, uh, uh, there's always a lot of work behind this. So special thanks to Catherine Bosio for CNR, to Anna Nicito and our trusted colleagues for the organization of these three days. Okay, let's start. So this is us or part of us, actually. This is the picture that we took in December in Brussels, where we had the final event of the pilot Blue Cloud project. But on that day, uh, we also formally announced uh, the launch of the Blue Cloud 2026 initiative. So uh, there are many of you uh, today who attended that event. There are also new faces. So it's a pleasure for uh, the three of us uh, to welcome uh, you to, to PISA and to start working with you. So on behalf of myself, uh, Pasquale, Lina, you will meet him, and, and Dick, who together, uh, we will play the role of coordinators of this, uh, of this project. So uh, Blue Cloud 2026 uh, payoff states uh, a federated European fair and open research ecosystem for ocean seas, coastal and inland waters. And that's what we aim to reach. You know that Blue Cloud 2026 builds on the pilot Blue Cloud project, which established uh, a cyber a pilot open science platform providing researchers access to uh, multidisciplinary data sets, analytical services, and facilities, uh, computing facilities essential for uh, making and performing blue science. So we aim at further evolving this pilot ecosystem into a federated European ecosystem to deliver fair, open data analytical services uh, for deepening research. Uh, uh, over the UC's coastal and inland waters. So what we are building is what we call uh, the thematic marine extension uh, to EOSC uh, for uh, a web-based open science. The project started on the 1st of January, 2023rd, and will last for 42 months until June, 2026, with an overall budget of 8.5 million euro uh, plus the contribution of two associated two partners from associated countries that sum up to this figure. Uh, it was funded under the Horizon Infra 2022 ESC01 call is a research and innovation action. And uh, we have the pleasure today to have uh, online uh, listening to us and then uh, intervening very soon, Nicolas Ejebar, 
the Blue Cloud Policy Officer from the Healthy Oceans and Seas Unit of the, the DG Research and Innovation, the GRTD, and Michel Schuppe, Senior Expert of the European Commission and Team Leader of the European Open Science Cloud uh, Group uh, Unit of uh, the GRTD. And uh, we also have Antonio Ventura from the Research Executive Agency online, uh, who will be uh, the Blue Cloud 2026 uh, project officer. So, so let's start with uh, some very good news. So last Friday, uh, and thanks uh, to Michelle for facilitating this, uh, uh, the press release announcing the Blue Cloud 2026 launch was uh, distributed by the European Commission. So we'll soon receive it also uh, via uh, Blue Cloud channels. And it introduces Blue Cloud and its sister project, Aqua Infra, that uh, you'll also have the opportunity to, to meet today. As the, uh, the project, uh, the two reference project for um, uh, contributing to two of the two main programs of the European Commission. So one is the European Open Science Cloud. The other is the uh, European Union mission, uh, restore our oceans and waters. So these are the two uh, programs that we will be looking at throughout the 42 months of the project. And that will be uh, our reference points to achieve the objectives that we, we aim to achieve. So this was the Blue Cloud Consortium in 2019. So almost three and a half years ago, we were 20 partners uh, from uh, different regions uh, in Europe. And this is the consortium today. So we double up the, the group of uh, institutes and research centers and partners uh, that uh, joined. Uh, the effort, I mean, to uh, further expand the pilot uh, blue cloud infrastructure. We are 40 partners, of which uh, two associated uh, countries, two partners from associated countries and two affiliated entities uh, from 13 different uh, countries. So when discussing with Vic and Lino, uh, about the meeting today and this opening. I mean, uh, they said something, they both said something that I liked very much. They said in, in Blue Cloud, we, we built something very concrete. Uh, so that should be our aim to be very concrete and to the point. And so I like to remind us where we uh, left. So uh, some of the Blue Cloud 2026 20, uh, main results. So uh, we, we have three main, let's say, um, group of assets. So the data discovery and access service, which allowed uh, 25,000 entries to be indexed uh, all in one, in one place, and it uh, gives uh, access to more than 10 million data sets. And uh, we'll have then uh, Dick uh, further commenting on the evolution planned uh, for the next months. Uh, then there is the virtual research environment that was used by at least 1,300 users. We counted them uh, over the uh, past project. And together with the five virtual laboratories that were developed, um, they built 15 services that are now available also through uh, the EOSC uh, marketplace. And we also pointed a number of working sessions just to stress that they, they were used within and also um, outside the consortium. So if you uh, took that booklet at the entrance, uh, we collected the virtual labs uh, all in one, uh, in one booklet. So these are uh, some of the outcomes from a scientific point of view that were uh, possible thanks to the cloud. But since one of the reasons of the success of the project was also uh, its efforts towards demonstrating the power of the uh, resources developed by sharing them with external communities to assess them, test them, and get feedback on usability and reproducibility of the results. Uh, we cannot forget that we had uh, 13 hackathon pilots that were tested uh, during an hackathon in, uh, that was uh, launched in February last year. So again, applications were uh, started and, and some were really developed in the framework of Blue Cloud. And then we also established uh, a number of synergies with other uh, infrastructure projects, 
uh, initiatives uh, in, in Europe. Some of them were, again, really uh, concrete, really technical. They are bringing uh, technological advancements. You can see Jericho research infrastructure here and now. The partners behind Jericho are also partners in Blue Cloud. You see EuroC, uh, Tostetano is rushing on a train from Flores to come and join us since he will be one of the experts uh, of, the, uh, of Blue Cloud. <clears throat> so, and uh, at the end of, at the end of um, uh, Blue Cloud, uh, we released also the Blue Cloud Roadmap, where the mission to 2030 was uh, uh, clarified, put uh, black on white. So the aim uh, uh, for Blue Cloud is to evolve as a key component of Europe's fair marine digital knowledge ecosystem. So Blue Cloud 2026 is perfectly aligned to that. And uh, it will contribute to the successful evolution of the digital marine knowledge system to support the EU Green Deal and the United Nations uh, agenda for 2030 by becoming a link with EOSC, as we said, so making ocean and freshwater digital commons accessible to the EOSC community and supporting the development of the digital twins of the ocean, adding uh, valuable data sets to the applications there. Here is the mission of the Cloud 2026, as we said, to become the marine thematic EOSC. And um, in order to do so, so as, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, two um, programs and we will strongly liaise with the um, actors behind this program. So uh, the EOSC, so the European Commission uh, unit for the uh, European Open Science Cloud, but also the entire EOSC uh, governance. And that's why later on I'll also uh, give the floor to Ute Gunzenheimer, Secretary General of um, uh, the Blue Cloud, sorry, the EOSC uh, um, Association, and we also have uh, representatives in our expert um, group from the EOSC Association, namely um, Sara Garavalli, who is with us today as well. Uh, then the uh, EU mission restore our oceans and waters, as we uh, said, and in this framework, I've put here the logos of some of the initiatives that we have uh, worked with already, we're starting working to, with, so one is the Aqua Infra initiatives that's kicked off as uh, Blue Cloud 2026 uh, last month, who was funded, uh, uh, I believe, a couple of years ago uh, in the framework of the uh, development of the digital twins of the ocean. And then the DITO initiatives, and we'll have Mercator Ocean today um, giving, uh, explaining us more in detail what uh, is Mercator, what are bleeds and what are the bodies funded by the European Commission to build this program uh, doing. And we have Marina Tonani uh, with us and she's also a member of the consortium. Then, since uh, I'm the project manager, so, uh, and we need to be concrete, we said, I'll also do an overview of the expected outcomes. I won't go into details since we have these three days to actually deep dive onto the, into the expectations. And there is a technical session uh, later on led by Dick and, um, and uh, Lino on the technical aspects, but uh, I think it's useful to remind us who is doing what. So. First, uh, the one, the, the first, uh, I mean, uh, it's not a list, but the first uh, assets that we will evolve is uh, the data discovery and access services. So a fair compliant service. This will be led by Maris as part of work package two. So fair compliant discovery and access services for marine domains and beyond. Then uh, there is the uh, evolution of the blue cloud virtual research environment and its integration with the ESC services. This is done by World Package 5, led by CNR. Then we have a series of uh, novelties, I would, would say, compared to um, the pilot Blue Cloud. So World Package 3 is looking after the development and testing of analytical workbenches for generating high qualified data collection. It is led by IFREMER. And in this uh, work package, there will be three work were benches to be developed, one on physics, one on ecosystems, and one on eutrophication. <clears throat> then we have the virtual labs. So uh, they will be led by Bliss. 
and uh, there will be uh, five virtual labs, free leverage on the outcomes of three successful virtual labs in Blue Cloud. They were all successful, but we are bringing forward three of them, and plus another two uh, who will be introduced. And here they are, just to get you an overview of the data sets that they uh, collect and the providers that are behind uh, the, the virtual labs uh, already in, embedded in the project. Then we have work package six uh, that will look after outreach, engagement, and education. And uh, in particular, this is the work package where all the synergy program will run. So again, we will continue establishing close connections uh, with initiatives in, uh, in EOS, in the DTO framework, in Europe in general. And that's where the training academy will uh, uh, be um, uh, orchestrated. Uh, and the, the work package is led by Trust IT. Last but not least, work package seven uh, is dedicated to exploitation strategic roadmap to 2030 and sustainability, will be led by Seascape colleagues and will overlook uh, the important aspects linked to the uh, exploitation and long term uptake uh, of the Blue Cloud solution and its position, let's say, in the overall framework that we have highlighted uh, before. I'd like to thank again the experts that are supporting the project. We have 10 onboarded already. You can see them in these slides. And three of them are in person uh, today. They, they, come, they came to Pisa. They are coming, let's say, so we have Mark uh, Taconet, uh, who uh, will also um, uh, introduce uh, the relations uh, between Blue Cloud and the FAO Blue Transformation Priority Programs in the context of the UN. Then we have Tostit Hanua from Geomar. He's, he's really uh, arriving. Uh, he just had his flight cancelled from Geomar, and he's also representing Eurocy. So uh, he will uh, make the collection with the observing system. And then Sara Garavelli, that is over there, and she will be our connection with the EOSC Marketplace and the EOSC uh, Association. And that's it. So I now thank you all again, and I'm pleased to give the floor to our guest speakers for today. So I, I call Nicolas Segebar from DGRTD, uh, who will introduce Blue Cloud in the framework of the emission restore oceans and waters. So he is connecting from remote. Can you? Thank you, Sarah. I hear you well. I hope you hear me too. I can hear you perfectly. Perfect. And if you allow me to share, I have a few slides. Yes, I believe. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, yeah, we can see your slides. Okay, I okay. perfect. I think you see it all right. You yeah. see it well? Yeah. You can see it properly, yes. Okay, okay, perfect. So first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words for the opening of Blue Cloud 2026. It's of course my pleasure to be here with you, uh, albeit virtually. I would have loved to, to be there with you in, in Italy and meet in particular all your new partners because I've been following Blue Cloud, uh, the first project for since its beginning. I would have been really delighted to be there physically with you and, and meet all the partners, which will help you to further develop and strengthen uh, what you have been doing for the last three years. Now, because uh, Blue Cloud 2026 has been funded under a topic which has been drafted specifically to support the EU mission restore our ocean and waters. And you mentioned the other project which has been funded under the same topic, which is Aqua Infra. We thought that uh, it was a good idea to refresh a little bit on what are the EU missions, even if most probably you all have, have heard about the EU missions and know a little bit what it is, but still it's a very new instrument and an innovative instrument. So it's useful to remind what, it is, what they are. Um, Okay, so 
EU missions are designed to support Europe's transformation into a greener, healthier, inclusive and resilient society. They aim at bringing tangible results for the benefits of the people, and they aim at, do the, at doing that by triggering the necessary technological, social, business and government transformation to bring this concrete solution or to the greatest challenges of our time. Um, we have established five missions to start with, at least. One is on adaptation to climate change. The second one is on climate neutral and smart cities, where we hope to have 100 cities that become climate neutral and smart by 2030. We have a mission on soils, a mission on cancer. Nicola, Nicola, can you hear me? This is Alan speaking. And uh, you have black boxes on your on your your, your screen. I don't know if it's you or. Yeah, I think. Uh, can you try maybe and stop sharing and restart sharing again, Nicola? What do you see exactly? We have some black boxes, windows, on oh. top of the mission ocean uh, okay. background. Sorry uh, to, to interrupt you. No, no. Is this better, maybe? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's better now. Oh. I think yeah, I must be sharing your. Okay. Thanks. So sorry about that, and thanks for letting me know because I could not see that. <laughs> so the missions um, they really aim at developing, demonstrating, and then deploying at scale innovative solution to restore our ocean. In the case of the mission ocean, so they are really rooted in science. But what they propose is a system approach which goes far beyond research projects and programs. It is the acknowledgement that uh, such huge societal challenges need a comprehensive approach that, cross, that cuts across, across different policies and rely on a multitude of programs at EU, but also at national and regional levels and rely also on different levels of governance. All the missions are very large mobilization initiative that aim to engage with European um, at, at all levels, as I said. They will propose a, a new form of cooperation, allowing everyone and everybody to play an active role. The Mission Ocean um, has three main objectives with a 2030 horizon, each of them having very specific targets. The first objective is to protect and restore um, the marine and freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity and targets set by the EU regulation and strategies is to protect, for instance, 30% of the EU seas, restore the marine ecosystems and achieve 25,000 kilometers of free flowing rivers. Second objective is to prevent and eliminate pollution, for instance, by reducing by 50% plastic literacy, nutrient losses, and the use of chemical pesticides. And the third objective is to make the blue economy climate neutral and circular with net zero maritime emissions. Two cross-cutting enablers have been identified for us if we want to reach this objective. The first one is public mobilization and engagement. As I said, it's essential that we manage to get this wide commitment of people, of countries, of programs for the mission. Otherwise, we will not be able to reach our objectives. And the second one is the digital ocean and water knowledge system of, on which I will come back in a second. The mission lighthouse have a very strong regional dimension. And this is uh, shown here by the new concept of lighthouses which are really sites where solutions will be piloted and demonstrated and where the methodologies will be tested and then replicated at, on a large scale. We have identified four basins. There's no surprise to the basin by themselves. Um, the Atlantic and Arctic, the Danube, the Met Sea, and, um, oops, and, and the Baltic. Each of them will start focusing on one of the objectives. And then gradually in time, in two or three years from now, they will address all the objectives also. So the digital ocean and water knowledge system. Uh, 
of course, one of the way to convey knowledge to stakeholders is by providing the appropriate system to do so. And we strongly believe that the digital world will be key to this aim. One of the key deliverable of this digital ocean and water knowledge system is what we call the EU DTO. So here the objective is not to develop a single digital twin of the ocean, which will solve all. Of course, that is not possible. But what we, we will try to do is developing all the necessary infrastructure, tools, services to allow people to develop these systems. So you mentioned a, a project called Edito, and that is exactly it. I'm very glad to, to hear that uh, Marina will talk about it. So Edito is an initiative which is there to develop the core infrastructure for the, the urban digital twin of the ocean. It will do so first by bringing together existing assets in Europe, like the Copernicus Marine Service, Imonet, the research infrastructure, and it will bring together data models and services to be able to interact, play, model, do the forecast, really targeting um, the users, the final users. Before I finish my very short introduction, I have a call to all of you, and that is to have a look at the mission charter. The mission charter is one of these mobilization tools that we have developed. It is open to you as a project, to every single institution, even to people individually, and they will provide a number of advantage. First, of course, it's a very clear signal of commitment to the objective of the mission. It shows that you as a project, as an institution, as a citizen, commit to delivering useful outputs of your daily activities, of your projects for, for the mission. It's not a financially binding or it's a political commitment, but it will also bring a number of advantages for you. Um, it will give more visibility to your action becoming an official actor of the mission. It will support you to multiply your networking opportunities to improve knowledge and help you to disseminate. We will create uh, through all the mission endorsers, uh, a community of practice. We will help them to create impact. And we will also provide a number of services through what we call the mission implementation platform. So, it's very easy to, to find and to endorse. Um, you go on the, you can even just Google it, charter mission restore ocean and waters and see the process. I really call on you to, to do so. And uh, well, now focusing on the digital, on the blue cloud 2026, I'm looking forward to very much to the development. I have enjoyed the first pilot blue cloud for three years, we had a lot of exchanges. And so now I look really very much to, to the next phase to see how you will interact with that other project, Aqua Infra. I think that is very key in my view because they have also a special focus on the interface between the fresh waters and the marine waters and the mission. We call it the mission ocean, but it's really the mission hydrosphere. So it is about the connection between all the fresh waters and the ocean. And then, of course, uh, look how you can contribute as a project to the development of that uh, EU DTO core infrastructure. It is essential that we manage to reach a very wide range of heterogeneous types of data and data sources. And this is where I, one of the places where I think uh, Blue Cloud 2026 has, has a great potential. So thank you very much. And uh, I will follow with attention what you will be doing uh, in the next year. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you very much. And I, I confirm you already had a, a point about the mission, mission charter in the steering board meeting. So this is something we are going to to uh, look after very, very soon. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. OK. And now I welcome Michelle Schuppe. Yes, hello. Hi, Michelle. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Do you hear me? Yes. Can I hear you properly? Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> so um, good afternoon, everyone. Very happy to be with you, at least remotely. Uh, same regrets as Nicolas, not to be in Pisa uh, and be able to discuss with all of you. Still, I think it's a nice opportunity to to set uh, the activities of the Blue Cloud 2026 uh, project into perspective. And uh, I like maybe first uh, to start explaining the reasons uh, why uh, the Blue Cloud 2026 and its uh, sister project Aqua Infra are important to us in the commission. So just to extend what Nicola has already explained, uh, the main reason is that your activities uh, fall at the intersection of several key policy initiatives that we are conducting uh, in Europe. So I'd like to mention the European data strategy. Uh, you might know that it has a focus on uh, 10 data spaces, and this includes the Green Deal data space and the EOSC, uh, which is defined as the data space for science, research and innovation. So this is one. Uh, I could also mention the many EU strategies um, on the bioeconomy, on the circular economy, the, the blue gloves strategy, the marine strategy framework directive. You probably know many of them. And I could also mention the UN Sustainable Development Goals, especially uh, the goals number two on zero hunger and 13 on climate action, and of course, 14 on life below water. Now, if I have to put one policy at the forefront today, I would it would be the open science policy uh, that we implement across Europe. Um, <clears throat> as many of you know, open science affects the whole research cycle, all its stakeholders, and of course, the impact research can have uh, on all uh, the policies I just have mentioned. And this implies three things. It implies sharing knowledge and tools as early as possible, as openly as possible, and as fair as possible. So we believe, and when I say we, it's not only the commission, uh, the member states uh, do follow uh, as part of the era context and the era policy that this is part, open science is part of excellent science and collaborative research. And this should happen not only within your own discipline, but also between research disciplines and society at large. So I will not <laughs> develop further on open science, but this, of course, uh, was a key element in, in the call, the topic call from which uh, this project is, is coming out. So these are the reasons why uh, <clears throat> we have decided to invest 16 million euros uh, into these two projects. Uh, I can assure you that the member states are behind. We had to discuss this, uh, this call with the program committee. And um, I think everybody is happy to do this EU investment. Uh, this is also why we produce this news alert uh, on the EC side to alert everybody on the kickoff meetings of the two projects. And I would add that this investment uh, <clears throat> is also part of the EC contribution to the EOSC European Partnership uh, that, that, uh, that the, the next speaker, uh, Ute Gunzenheimer from the EOSC Association, is going to introduce. So. Today, I first would like to congratulate the old consortium. Uh, having a kickoff meeting is always an achievement after a long process of writing a proposal and getting it evaluated and having a, a grant negotiated. Uh, but it's more than an achievement. I think it's, it's an evolution, a continuation and an evolution. Because as you know, you don't start from scratch. Uh, Blue Cloud has already delivered very important elements, a fair data space with the participation of several data providers across the marine domain, and a service platform 
which uh, uh, encompasses data discovery and access, virtual research environment and virtual labs. But I would say Blue Cloud 2026 is not a carbon copy of the Blue Cloud project. Uh, as Sarah explained, you have extended the partnership, which also means a reinforced co cooperation. Um, so we, we, we expect that there will be more e-infrastructure services integrated with uh, your anal analytical services. Um, there will be more workflows related to essential ocean variables. Um, and also there is this link with the mission, which means that you don't do just science for science, uh, but we aim at concrete solutions defined by society. Uh, <clears throat> and we aim at a real mobilization of public and private actors. Uh, as Nicola said, with local authorities, local managers, and the citizens. Another expectation from the project is that we would like to see a shift in technological readiness. You have a prototype platform, but there is a, an achievement, or at least a commitment, to move from TRL7 to TRL8. This is extremely difficult. This means going from a demonstrated prototype to a qualified system in an operational environment. And this is uh, extremely ambitious. We also hope to see an extension of the user base of the Blue Cloud uh, research labs beyond the, the many users already reported in the context of Blue Cloud, the previous projects. We would like to see a deepening of the demonstrators that you are going to work on for ecosystems research, conservation, forecasting, innovation in the blue economy. And this is really reflecting, um, <clears throat> I would say, the, the essence of the topic call. We were calling for cross-domain strategic use cases that demonstrate the value of sharing fair and open research data. Of course, we will be happy to uh, increase interaction between your consortium and the EOSC governance in a wide sense with the EOSC core and the marketplace. Um, <clears throat> you probably know that we have launched from the Commission side a procurement for um, a professional uh, EOSC uh, core and EOSC marketplace. This will come in the years 24, 5, 6. So we'll, happy, we'll be happy to, to link this with the outcome of your project. Uh, and we also will further develop an EOSC interoperability framework, which will be cross domain. And there again, I think there is a lot of experience that could be shared from the marine research community and the neighboring disciplines into this framework. So just to conclude, um, <clears throat> I think the project will help developing the EOSC in a more cohesive and structured manner. It will enable to discover and access to multidisciplinary and aggregated data sets. It will help to carry out cross-domain analysis and processing of data. Uh, it will produce shared research data that are fair by design, something which is very important to us and to the member states. And accelerate community uptake of open science practices. Um, the issue of federating research infrastructure and digitizing research infrastructure was discussed no later than last week uh, in the Competitiveness Council. So, the ministers of the EU27 are discussing how to simplify uh, or jigsaw puzzle of research data infrastructure in Europe. And I think you have good lessons, good demonstrators to tell us. So for all these reasons, uh, your work matters a lot to us and we will follow it with big interest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr.
I, I'm not looking up at any questions coming from the chat or in the room, but of course, uh, if you have any, feel free to, to raise your hand. So, and now let, let's move on, uh, deepening dive into our contribution to the EOSC. And I call uh, Ute Gunsenheimer online. Hello, can you hear me, Sarah, and the rest in the well, audience? Very well, we can see you extremely well. Thank you so much. So I bring up my slides and I hope you can see them in slide mode now. Yes. Very good. So thank you very much, Sarah, and for everyone for inviting me. And I'm happy to be here at your kickoff event. And we've just heard from Michelle, you have a lot of challenges to address. And I would like to basically invite you to use the support that we can offer in the context of the EOSC partnership and in the context of our own project, the EOSC Focus. So just to explain what is the EOSC partnership, I will start with, um, first of all, introducing my own organization, the EOSC Association, which is the representation of the community. And this is how it looks when we meet in person. Um, that was last year and the next meeting takes place um, on the 22nd and 23rd of May in Brussels this year. The EOSC Association is a fairly young organization established in summer 2022 um, with the purpose to provide a single voice for the advocacy and representation of the broader EOSC stakeholder community to promote the alignment of European Union research policy and priorities with activities coordinated by the association and to enable seamless access to data through interoperable services that address the entire research data lifecycle. The EOSC Association is in a co-programmed Horizon Europe partnership together with the European Commission that was launched in June 2021. And this is a 1 billion euros commitment by the European Union and the EOSC Association and its members. What's the basis for this partnership? The basis is the strategic research and innovation agenda. And that has three objectives to make open science practices and skills are rewarded and taught, becoming the new normal. Standards, tools, and services allow researchers to find, access, reuse, and combine results. And sustainable and federated infrastructure enable open sharing of scientific data. This three, which I guess many of you are familiar with, has um, uh, two annexes, so to speak, and a third one is under development. And those are called multi-annual roadmaps. And um, the Blue Cloud 2027, for example, um, has been, let's say, theoretically addressed under the multi-annual roadmap for the years 21 and 22. And now I would like to briefly explain you where you as a project sit in the whole development process of the partnership when it comes to the description and um, development of the different calls, but then also to the projects and the expected delivery. So um, the partnership between the European Commission and the EOSC Association is governed by a memorandum of understanding, and we have two participating um, DGs, DG RTD and DG Connect. And this multi-annual roadmap is informed by the community that is represented in the EOSC Association. However, in order to turn this multi-annual roadmap into the work program, negotiation between the European Commission and the member states and associated countries take place. Once they have agreed, the work program is being published and you apply for a project. And you have been very successful in doing that and have been awarded um, your grant um, for the next, I think, three years. Now, all projects together are expected to deliver towards the uh, development and deployment of EOSC. And in order to support your efforts, we have established a collaboration that we have framed in the so-called Vademecum. This is a handbook which um, we have set up in order to facilitate the collaboration between you and the other infra EOS projects and between you and the EOS partnership. And that is being supported by the EOS association and our own project, the EOS focus. EOS looks like this. 
And this is how the EOSC family looks like of all the different projects that have been awarded under the 2021 call. So we have rebranded the whole EOSC endeavor in order to ensure a consistent look and to, let's say, visually speak with a one voice towards all the different stakeholders in Europe in order to be have a high level of awareness and recognition among the different stakeholders. And we're very happy that Blue Cloud 2026 is following this approach. I mentioned the Vademecum, and I would just to briefly guide you through the headlines of the Vademecum since we don't have too much time, but then I tell you how it works in practice. So the different headlines of this Vademecum, uh, Vademecum address um, collaboration possibilities in the areas of governance, of administration, so that we simply um, exchange basic information that we know who we are and how we can get better in touch with each other. That a big part is the communication and stakeholder engagement, where we think there are so many low hanging fruits that we should really work and strengthen the collaboration in this field. It's in the area of monitoring and measuring the impact of the um, projects and the progress towards um, achieving EOSC. And finally, the technical developments. And now I would like to present briefly how that works in practice and invite you to join this collaboration. This is when we met at the EOS Symposium in Prague in November last year, where we invited all the project coordinators of the Infra EOS projects to meet us, get to know each other, but also get in touch with our task forces, who are our internal brain pool within the association to strategically um, progress on EOS. And um, in order to allow the facilitation of collaboration, we have established what we call a community engagement platform, the EOSC Forum. And there you can see Sarah is already on it. And she's a very active contributor there because that's the place where you can easily target more than um, 500 people from the closer community. And we have a calendar function that allows you um, as a project to see what else is going on in the community. And in order to optimize out your outreach to um, certain target groups, you're then easily aware of when you better don't place your event because someone else is already organizing something. We have had a first meeting and that was facilitated by Michelle and the team in DGRTD, REA and Connect um, in September last year, where we um, came together to introduce this Vadomecum as a first draft to all the project coordinators and to invite them to work with us towards its optimization. And I hope that our next meeting, including the 2022 project coordinators, will take place um, sooner than later this year. Um, uh, during the EOS Symposium, as I said, we were there, you were there, these were the 2021 projects, but already the 2022 projects, meaning in this case, Blue Cloud 2026 was introduced by Sarah to the broader audience there in the room, more than 400 people um, in the room were already made aware of this project. We have established a working group um, and we started with communication and engagement. And that working group is by another participant today, Basara Garavelli. And there we bring together all the communication stakeholder engagement work packages of the different projects to identify um, joint collaboration possibilities when it comes to stakeholders and communication. And what we have decided last week, uh, last time is that we want to work on establishing a macro roadmap that demonstrate how the different projects contribute to the establishment of EOSC. And if needed, I guess Sarah can always um, present more details in the course of the next days. We also have uh, kicked off the collaboration with the technology working group. There we have had only two meetings so far, so it's relatively early stage. So, I mean, nothing has been missed. And there we started off with better understanding what are the results of EOSC future that are relevant for our infra EOSC projects now in order um, to, let's say, hook on in the right place and at the right moment. And we already have a first success. 
two of the 2021 projects, Fair East and Euroscience Gateway, have, uh, have discussed to join forces. And they come from two different scientific domains, from the earth and the life sciences. And I think this is already a first, let's say, encouraging proof that collaboration um, that is basically framed and facilitated um, really helps and works in order to move forward together with joint forces. So what do I, let's say, offer and ask you is to discuss during the kickoff meeting how you wish to explore the collaboration possibilities with us and the intra EOS projects in the course of your um, consortium to appoint, if you're interested, representatives for our different working groups and send me an email and just join us. So that is what I would like to invite you to participate in, and I'm looking forward to a successful and fruitful collaboration. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Okay. And, and just to strengthen the message, I really believe that you all can contribute a lot to risk. So any, and I mean, I don't know how many times I've fought in one of these meetings, okay, but probably Blue Cloud colleagues would know the answer, or maybe Blue Cloud of colleagues have already experienced this. So really, uh, we now have the position to do so. Okay, and now I'm happy and glad to welcome Matt Lacone on the floor. Bow and member, yes, of the uh, expert group of Blue Cloud. Thank you, Sarah. And I think I've <coughs> sent a few slides. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk to you as a member of the ESEP for Blue Cloud 2026. FAO was a, an active uh, partner in Blue Cloud, but uh, for certain administrative reasons, we cannot be anymore a direct partner in Blue Cloud 2026. Sorry, we're finding your slides. Uh, sorry. <laughs> So, um, so we will remain present in uh, Blue Cloud 2026 uh, through the ESF, through the steering board, and through uh, active collaborations. Um, but I will try in this uh, presentation to uh, call upon your emotions. Uh, and, and let me start with this question. Um, why, do we, why do we cherish our oceans? Uh, is it for their beauty and inspiration power? Well, yes, most probably uh, we like to enjoy vacations on the beach, uh, recreational water sports, and we are amazed by its fantastic fauna. Or is it because we respect uh, what we hold to them. Indeed, science tells us that they regulate our climate and are important thing for greenhouse gas, and they generate the water and, and most of the oxygen that we breathe. Or is it again for their contribution to our economies and livelihoods? Yes, indeed. They support sectors from tourism to international shipping and fisheries, and very importantly, they provide food. Fish as a source of food and nutrition, economic wealth and livelihoods. <clears throat> this is my professional engagement at FAO, the UN Organization for Food and Agriculture. FAO's mission, you might know, is the fight against hunger, which today is faced by a major challenge, which is feeding up to 9 billion people by 2050 and doing so in sustainable ways in the context of climate change. Just, just think of this challenge. On one side, food is a fundamental human need and no concessions can be made. On the other side, the agriculture sector is responsible for around 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. And this tells us how much it is at stake to identify the right solutions for agri-food systems which are sustainable. So we need radical solutions because with only seven years left by 2030, the world 
is unfortunately not on track to end hunger and malnutrition and achieve the sustainable development goals, <coughs> the SDGs. So, <coughs> so here comes FAO's Blue Transformation Initiative. Uh, it stems from a diagnostic. Fisheries and aquaculture can sub substantially contribute to food security and nutrition, but only if sustainability is at the core of all efforts. Blue transformation is about accelerating progress for reaching the SDGs at the end of this decade. It aims at sustainably transforming the aquatic food systems and builds on three pillars um, illustrated by the images here. The first is sustainable aquaculture. We say that aquaculture can expand and intensify and its production can increase by 15% by 2030. But for this to be sustainable, we must focus on aqua, aqua feeds and feeding, responsible genetic resources, promote efficient pro-environmental practices, such as through spatial zoning, digital aquaculture, environmental monitoring for safe aquaculture products and LC ones. The second is sustainable fisheries. Effective management of all fisheries is essential to rebuild stocks, increase catches, and restore ecosystems to a healthy state. And the third is value chains. Sustainable aquaculture and fisheries depend on upgraded value chains with innovations, for example, enhancing consumer awareness of the benefits of fish as food, reducing loss on waste, and improving access to lucrative markets, for example, through reliable traceability systems. As I said, blue transformation is all geared to accelerate progress towards the SDGs. It doesn't harm briefly recalling what the SDGs are. It's a global framework adopted by countries in 2015 under the UN umbrella with objectives set for 2030. The progress is monitored through 231 indicators based on the, and, and uh, UN agencies are nominated custodian agencies for selected indicators based on their mandate and expertise. FAO, for example, is custodian agency for 21 indicators, indeed uh, SDG2 for uh, ending hunger, for example, but also four of which are uh, under SDG14 and they concern the ocean. <coughs> SDG14, sorry, um, here we want to fast. SDG 14 Life Below Water is an international recognition that the sustainable use and conservation of the oceans is a key feature of sustainable development, very much aware that ocean and coastal areas are extremely vulnerable. And Goal 14 has 10 targets dedicated to the humanity's interactions with the ocean to address land-based and marine-based threats, including ocean acidification, pollution, unsustainable practices on ecosystems, and overfishing. You can understand from this slide how much achieving goal 14 is a multidisciplinary and collaboration effort. Here you, I've represented in different colors uh, the targets for which uh, different UN cust uh, agencies are custodian. In green, UNEP, is geared to address the degradation of marine environment and ocean health. And there, unfortunately, the indicators on acidification and pollution still reveal worsening trends. UNEP also covers the protection of marine environment. Here, let's be glad that the conservation of marine areas is showing a clear progress through the trends of the indicator 1451. UNEP does this together with IOC UNESCO in blue. IOC UNESCO covers the restoration of marine ecosystems, notably their biotic component. And importantly for today's audience, IOC also covers this uh, transversal target on the right, 
14a, increase science, research, technology for ocean health and marine biodiversity. Uh, under this, tar this target is harnessed the UN decade of ocean science, which Blue Cloud 2026 aims at supporting amongst others. On the extreme right here, you have the UN Secretariat of the Law of the Sea, UN Doalos in Rome, is a custodian for another transversal target on legal matters, implementation of international law. And finally, um, FAO in gray uh, is custodian agency on indicators that concern sustainable use of uh, marine resources in their economic, social, and environmental dimensions. Here we note encouraging trends towards uh, targets 14.6, which is reducing subsidies uh, for harmful uh, overfishing, and 14b, uh, more rights for small-scale fishers. And this testifies that countries are actually adopting relevant policy frameworks. But for what concerns the restoration of fish stocks uh, under 14.4, effective management has demonstrated its positive effect where strong policies are in place, and Europe is one of those. Um, this is encouraging indeed, but need, more needs to be done globally because indicator 1441 is still showing a degradation of the situation at global level. All these areas of ocean sustainability interact with each other and stakeholders are integrating this in, this, in their strategies. How for example, uh, has now included in its strategic framework the objective streamlining biodiversity in fisheries. So this recognizes that there cannot be sustainable use of fishery resources without preservation of marine ecosystems, uh, in turn their production capacities. Special measures, for example, marine protected areas, are becoming key instruments for preserving ecosystems and this needs to take into account the increasing competition of various actors for the use of marine space. The latest of these actors being, for example, the marine wind, uh, wind turbine, turbines. We also need to anticipate how changes in oceanographic condition will affect uh, changes in species distribution or the spread of invasive species, the impacts on biodiversity richness. We need to assess the effects of pollutants on the species dynamics, on the safety of fishery products in aquaculture areas. So you've understood FAO has to work with other sectors in a cross-domain way and uh, science disciplines to achieve sustainable fisheries. So what do we expect Blue Cloud 2026 to realize? What I want to come at is that given the broad and multidisciplinary approach for marine sciences, of Blue Cloud 2026, it has a really strong potential to help generate the scientific evidence needed for supporting the SDGs. Blue Cloud 2026 addresses very important information technology challenges. It will interact with many data infrastructures, as we could see here. It will push interoperability. It will progress implementation of FAIR principles. Undoubtedly, it will have a broad community of IT engineers and data managers, hopefully through the lab, data scientists as well. This is necessary and an essential part, but it is not sufficient for impact. For impact, this project and its actors really need to reach out beyond the inner technology-minded community. And I heard that in the previous interventions. It must create what my colleague Anton Ellenbrook calls a super network beyond the network. It must develop its solution hand in hand with those actors and agencies directly involved in tackling these European or global policy challenges. So I invite you and ourselves to keep this in mind. We can all be actors of successful SDGs when undertaking our daily work. In the final event of uh, the Blue Cloud project, I displayed uh, this slide when I was on the panel. I do not intend to describe again its details. You can only see uh, the fisheries data value chain from data collection uh, in the countries to the left. 
to the global um, uh, science to policy dissemination interface to the right with our uh, state of world fisheries and aquaculture uh, dissemination and publication. And you may cut at glance that the blue cloud VREs, GLSF, Global Tuna Atlas, Regional Fisheries Atlas, are today playing a key role along this data value chain, directly supporting the indicator SDG 1441 on the status of fish stocks. To get there, reaching out to biologists, statistician colleagues required constant, convincing efforts, agility, and capacity to adapt to their views. And our colleagues from CNR, Lino, will testify how much they evolved their solution in accompanying FAO in uh, these collaboration objectives. Another essential tool to reach out to the broader community of scientists has been this training VRE that was offered for capacity building on this indicator. As part of our global workshops training series, we had about 800 participants worldwide, and the VRE is now self-running without any more promotion. Obviously, we want Blue Cloud 2026 to continue this effort with us. Another thing which we learned, for example, in working cross-domain with Food Cloud, you may develop fantastic IT systems, you will not achieve interoperability if you do not work with the inner communities on harmonizing vocabularies. So for impact, we need to leverage uh, Blue Cloud 2026 extraordinary potential in supporting policy frameworks that require a truly multidisciplinary approach. The ESEB and its members can help play this role to identify science scenarios and develop collaboration across institutions to share data and produce science. Some questions for us. How can we support actions for the UN decade of, uh, for ocean sciences? How can we, how, what can we do to support the recently adopted resolutions on the UN Biodiversity Conference COP15? And shouldn't we propose Blue Cloud 2026 to the forthcoming UN agreement on the biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction, BBNG, where the need for a clearinghouse mechanism has been clearly expressed. And in concluding, just remember this in your sustainability model. If the platform is used by many users and programs, they will, then it will be sustainable for sure. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mark. And of course, I mean, FAO is not a partner, a direct partner in the beneficiary in the consortium for reasons that go beyond uh, our uh, decisions, of course. But we, we want in them, uh, in let's say, part of the team following the work. That's why Mark is a member of the uh, External Expert Board. And we will have um, Anton or uh, colleagues, I mean, at FAO who will join as uh, um, external members also the steering board so to be updated and have a direct channel uh, to uh, be updated on the project evolution. So exploit them. Uh, they will stay the, the two and a half days. So in your meetings tomorrow, I'm thinking most of all work package three, work package four and work package six, uh, be sure that we maximize uh, the presence of our colleagues uh, uh, with us these days. Okay, with that, I thank you, the I mean, uh, speakers of this uh, first welcome session, and we move now to the true technical work. So I invite those online to stay uh, tuned and uh, continue listening because now uh, Dix Harp, the technical coordinator of Blue Clouds, and uh, uh, Pasquale Pagano, the scientific coordinator, uh, will uh, give a deep dive into the uh, scientific and technical uh, exploitation of the project. Thank 
<laughs> okay. Hi. Hello. I'm Hi. Uh, Sam from uh, Mares. And uh, yeah, I think I know most of you. You Most of you know me. That's good. <laughs> so of course, there are also some new people here that we haven't met and we will meet in the coming days. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to say as technical coordinator of Blue Cloud and also of this new project, the Blue Cloud 226, let's say to be here, to have this opening. And also here, of course, let's say a lot of presentations from uh, many of, uh, let's say, important people that tell us, let's say, the framework in which we are working. And that's something we always have to realize, of course, that we are, uh, we are working on projects, but of course, these projects must have an impact. And I really believe that in the Blue Cloud, let's say, that we are achieving a lot of steps forward. Uh, and they really have an impact also because we are working, let's say, on, I would say, new challenges uh, from, let's say, the virtual research and open science, which in the beginning were only buzzwords. And uh, also for me, let's say, were buzzwords. And by working on this, let's say, now for several years and every time going a little bit higher, let's say, more challenges, but also more achievements, you get the feeling that you get more grip on it. And, and that's something that I think we are now, that we are already now in a stage that we really can make it work, that we really can get results, which we couldn't do before. It's not only theory anymore, but it's also practice. And that's something that's very important to say for this project that we, uh, we have seen there are many expectations, very high expectations, a lot of ambitious. But of course, we, we should show by working very closely together that we can really uh, meet those ambitions and that we can set put something there that will be Will be a lot of catch-all let's say that people other people will want to catch on let's say they want to, uh, to work with us so there's a lot of synergy with other projects that really can achieve this and uh, go forward and i know i tell this story with every new project but it's on the other side this is really a, let's say a high challenge we really are going higher and higher but also we are more and more let's say framed in in, in policy and strategy which is uh, quite overreaching for a lot of projects and, and that's something that we have to realize in this project that uh, a lot of people are expecting but also want to help us want to support us want to promote us and of course we should not let them down okay then i want to give you my presentation i want to go a little bit uh, backwards of course in in uh, what was the blue cloud what have we achieved and from there then step forward to what we are going to achieve and uh, and what how we think we are going to go there and the, of course, tomorrow we go much deeper. I'll say then we go at work patch level and we go with activities. But in this case, it's more setting the scene and making everybody, uh, you know, say in a, let's say, let's call it a level playing field, so that everybody is at the same page that they know what we what we are talking about in this project. Because several in this group, as you've seen, we we are doubled in size, and it means that twenty of us they were already as partners were already in the previous three years, so they are already educated and fully aware of what we've done. But the new 20, let's say they just, you know, they really will need some time to, to adjust themselves and, and get engaged and get more and more um, idea about what we are doing and how to do it. And then, of course, play their role and, uh, and also contribute to the, to the great success. OK, let's go to the slides. Let me see if I can. It's difficult with technology. I always need a mouse. But in this case, I do it with this one. Yeah. Oh, that one. OK, good. So first of all, let's say I want to show you this. Let's say we have um, we are working in the marine field, and in the marine field there is a lot of acquisition of data, and this is um, done because we need data, let's say, already for many many decades to be able to, to get more science, more understanding of the system. But we also need it for industrial activities, commercial activities. But we also need it, let's say, as we see, let's say, to support all the directives and and the, and the, let's say the, the EU frameworks, etc. And we always use this this number that uh, was a study we did for Amodnet, and in Amodnet we said that we uh, spent yearly in Europe about 1.4 billion euro in, in acquiring data, and that's let's say about one billion is in the in situ domain and 0.4 is in the remote sensing domain, so the satellite sentinel program Copernicus, and of course having all these these activities and more and more because we also see a lot of sensor developments, let's say new technologies by which people are collecting data. So it's now underwater, on the water, it's from above the water, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, fixing, f fixed, floating, uh, sailing, flying, you name it. Every, every way we can, let's say we are collecting data from the sea. So we are really getting big data. And that means that also over all these decades, the EU has really, and Europe has really built up quite a capacity also to manage that data because it's, uh, 
because when you you spend so much money, of course, you also spend time and effort on on this data management. And that means that we uh, over time we built up a very nice uh, framework, and we always use this. At least I use always this this uh, image that was uh, produced by Eurogoose. And that gives an overview that, first of all, we have a layer where people are collecting data. In, uh, and those are thousands of uh, parties that do that from, from research, from government, from, from uh, industry. Uh, and more and more also citizens. That's also, we get citizen science more and more. And then we have a layer, what we call the aggregation layer. And in that aggregation layer, we, uh, yeah, we, we manage the data. We, we bring it to common standards. We document the data. And then also we use it, let's say, to make common products, generic products which uh, can then be used by others who use it uh, to give added value and, uh, and translate it into real, let's call it, um, yeah, practical solutions or practical applications in, in life. And it could be in industry, it could again be in governance, or it could be in, in science. So first of all, if you look at these aggregators, we have CDATNET as, as a leading one in Europe. And this is a network of the National Oceanographic Data Center. So that's something that we started already more than 30 years ago. And over time, it developed itself and expanded itself. And we have now more than 110 data centers which are connected and bringing in the data. And there's another one is uh, Ebonet. Ebonet is now more than 11 years old. And it was more, uh, see that it was a bottom-up initiative, but uh, Ebonet is more a top-down initiative by the commission, Nijimara in this case. And they uh, really focused, let's say, in, uh, in several thematics to, to make generic products for all of Europe using all the data that's already flowing from various uh, other sources like like CData, but also others, and that's very successful. And uh, and we are now going up for let's say for the second decade, so that's uh, quite good. And we also have then of course the Copernicus program with the Copernicus Marine, and they use also a lot of data, but also combine it with uh, let's say remote sensing data, the Sentinel and so on, and have, are developing and have developed a lot of uh, models, mathematical models by which we can also do forecasting, but also hindcasting. And in fact, in practice, all these uh, these big infrastructures, they work together because they can't, each of them, we need each other, let's say, likewise in, in synergies to be able to have better outputs. And But we are not alone because there are more research infrastructures and more structures that are collecting data. And that's something that um, yeah, it took a while, let's say, for people to realize that, that we have many RIs, many research infrastructures. Most of them are also in the, in the S3 program, uh, but they have to... Um, yeah, they all do part of, of, the, of, the, of the puzzle, you would say. Let's say they are in different domains, different disciplines, but we all need each other again. And this way we are more and more getting integrated or have to be integrated to be able to overcome this multidisciplinary and all these big challenges that, that we heard. And, and that's the way we need cross synergy between these research infrastructures, between AmoNet, Copernicus and NCDATNet to be able to achieve better output, more scientific input, uh, insights by which we can really contribute to the major problems that, um, and challenges that we see. And therefore we have, um, yeah, we were very happy to say that we had this Blue Cloud project in 2019, which was already going to say up that step. Eh? It, was, it was a challenge to bring these parties together and do something that quite, uh, I would say, uh, ambitious also at that time. And that means that we want to, to explore, explore and demonstrate, let's say, the potential of cloud-based open science in support of ocean sustainability. And for that purpose, let's say, we want to deploy uh, a cyber platform, which brings together a smart federation of data, computing resources, and algorithms. And that sounds very easy at the moment that we, that we formulated this, because, but we had to prove it still that it could work. And also what we uh, more or less you have heard, uh, the EOSC is, uh, is also very important for us as a framework, the European Open Science Cloud. And over time also EOSC has, has done further developments and we've seen further developments. And also a lot of people have contributed to those developments because in the beginning it was much more only e-infrastructure oriented, more technical. But over time it has become more and more, let's say, a, a real community effort, science and technology together, let's say, to, to make uh, a thriving marketplace and a thriving network. And we ourselves, I say, we think that Blue Cloud is can be seen as a thematic, marine thematic EOSC. So it's really, um, I would say, a translation of the EOSC cloud, but then in the marine domain. And my idea would be if we do this in all the domains, of course, and then having an interconnection with a common framework, you really get the EOSC that you want. And of course, for us to prove that this philosophy can work, and we are halfway, but we have more more steps to do. Uh, if you look at the common uh, 
concept, the overarching concept from day one for Blue Cloud is, uh, is in fact three layers. First of all, one that we say we have to get better discovery and access to data. So we need fair access and fair discovery. And for that, we have to make use of an, let's call it an interoperability framework, which are standards. And those standards can be computerized, let's say IT standards like OGC or um, <coughs> W3C. But of course, it can also be, let's say, standards like vocabularies or uh, common formats and uh, metadata formats, common formats for data, etc. So there's a lot of things which uh, which should make it possible, let's say, to, to get discovery and access to data in a common way. And of course, over all those research infrastructures that I showed you in the beginning. And once you have access to a common, I would say a common interface with data and, and uh, metadata, then you need also a virtual research environment in which you can make that data work with, with algorithms and with uh, support by computing power and, and, uh, and storage and hosting, let's say, by which you are able to get more out of this data, but also be able to work in a collaborative sense. So you can work with different scientists group working on the same topic, being in a virtual open science environment. And that's the, the overall concept. And that concept has been translated by us in the project. And in the project, we uh, were very lucky that we, from the start, we had, let's say, uh, a lot of uh, important and leading uh, research infrastructure and e-infrastructures on board that shared that, that, that vision. And we see on the left, you see, let's say, the various research infrastructures. So they really go from uh, physics to chemistry to, to biology to genomics to bathymetry to uh, atmosphere. So many, many uh, to microscopic uh, taxonomy. So it's, it's really a lot of different uh, data types. And on the right, we have uh, some of the leading uh, e-infrastructures. First of all, D4 Science, which is uh, managed and operated by CNR. So we are here at the home of D4 Science. And also UDOT, which is a group uh, of academic computing centers, and also Becchio, which is from, uh, let's say, from Copernicus Marine, which is their data and information access uh, cloud, I would say. And also we are supported also by EGI, which is another, let's say, the European uh, Grid Association, which is also part of the, of the yeah, supporting us, let's say, in the project, and also part of the Blue Cloud 226. And what we did is we, um, we, you know, established or we realized we developed three key products and services as part of the Blue Cloud. First of all, the Blue Cloud Data Discovery and Access Service, which is a federation over various existing so-called blue data infrastructures to give them a common discovery and access. Secondly, we have this Blue Cloud virtual research environment in which we can you know, do, uh, let's say, interdisciplinary and, and uh, science, let's say, using a lot of algorithms and, and computing power, and using, of course, the data that we can get from the discovery service, but also, of course, from other external sources, because you cannot bring everything under the same hood. And next to that, we have also, let's say, a demonstration, a proof of evidence, and that's, in fact, uh, several blue labs that worked on, on the theory and make use of the, uh, the data to produce, um, you know, to produce demonstrators, which really illustrate how you can work in such an environment and have very useful and productive output. Um, a little bit going deeper, a little bit deeper into the discovery service. So you see on the top, you see, let's say, all the blue data infrastructures that we brought under this federation. And in fact, what we do, we facilitate users, first of all. So we give a, a federated search. So people can see what, what the infrastructures really have interesting data sets for their purpose. And then they can drill down and be able to say to, 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 in fact, to download and shop for those data sets and get them delivered to them in a common way. And also it can also be, let's say, ported or shifted immediately towards the theory so you can use it in that domain. At the other side, we have the blue data infrastructure. It's also interesting for them because it gives them a wider outreach because they're part of this federation, which is like a portal that, that helps them, let's say, next to their own, uh, own portals, of course, to, uh, to give access. But also, they, um, yeah, we can by doing this together, we can also look at the differences, or the, or the you could say more the the needed harmonization between those different services, because we are all developing machine to machine services, and it's still quite new. And if somebody tells you I have an API, it sounds impressive, but at the same time, what is that API doing? So, so at that moment, you should by working together, you see that there are many differences between uh, the way that people interpreted certain services. And that's also the need that if you work together, that we can tune more and make it easier in the end for the applications and for the users. 
On the other side, we have also the virtual research environment, and that's uh, let's say a common platform. As already mentioned, eh? it's uh, for collaboration, it's for sharing, it's for reusing, it's for rep reproducing. So that's where we can do the actual science using data, but using also algorithms and computing power. And later, Lino will go a little bit deeper, of course, into this, uh, this these elements. And then we have uh, developed some virtual labs, and those virtual labs already were a, a demonstration of cross. I would say cross fertilization, cross synergy between different domains. So they were really multidisciplinary. And it, in this way, we, in fact, we, we had proof that you could do it this way by having scientific groups, excellent researchers, working with those, let's say, in the technical uh, uh, environment. And really, in the end, having workflows, analytical pipelines that produce results that we would like to see repeated or even, let's say, being uh, scaled up and expanded. So in fact, what we did in the blue cloud, I would say, uh, yeah, as a conclusion, I say we 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 really have uh, shown that uh, let's say that that this type of approach is very productive and and uh, should be uh, we should let's say continue this. We also shown that that we have this federation by the blue cloud blue cloud data discovery and access that it was possible. Although, like I say, really say in the back we've done a lot of plumbing, which means that we have to connect pipes different pipes with different sizes and we had to but it make it work but we also learned from this we have best practices that we can do it better of course if we look forward and, and in the next step we also shown that the, the modular architecture of the blue cloud virtual research environment is scalable and also sustainable so it means that we can develop more virtual labs and also we can enlarge those uh, those labs and we can expand them and also we can bring, of course, more users to, to really benefit from these, these developments and also start doing their own developments using the tools. And that's where the nice word they call composability, being able to say to connect different servers with each other, being served by good infrastructure, by, by good common standards around you. Uh, also, the Blue Cloud uh, Pilot, in fact, has confirmed that, uh, that the marine community is really interested in these kind of developments because you have seen the KPIs. Many people came and joined also the hackathon. Many people came and joined the, the, the work floor. And we've seen that, that it's something that we really have to push forward, let's say, because it can accelerate knowledge. It can accelerate, let's say, science. And there's a, a big interest. So we should continue this and expand. And that's why the Blue Cloud 226 will in fact, give more momentum to, to the momentum that we already uh, set up. But it's still in a small group, I would say, relatively. And with Blue Cloud 226, of course, we should be able to say to spin it even more and get more momentum and reach out to more. And there are many ways that say we, that can be done. One is, of course, is by cooperation, cooperation with many of these big programs like Copernicus, like AMODNET, like uh, DTO, Digital Twin of the Oceans. And also, of course, with EOSC. And that's why, let's say, we are in a very nice uh, company, I would say, company of uh, many large programs that all want to work with us, but also we have to prove to them that, of course, that we are worth working with them and that we really bring added value. Now, if you look at the, uh, the Blue Cloud 226, let's say based upon these results, we formulated the Blue Cloud 26, also uh, supported by uh, a roadmap that was uh, quite uh, thoroughly done, let's say, uh, speaking with many stakeholders, or the whole whole line of stakeholders, I would say, from the end user to, the, to let's say, to the politician. And, and this way we got a lot of feedback and also that was also a way of course to set uh, to set the scene set the context for for the developments and Sarah already went into details of this I also will go a little bit in detail so first of all we have let's say that we want to expand the, the data discovery and access service and that means that we want to bring on board uh, a couple of new blue blue data infrastructures so we want to expand the coverage I would say which has its own challenges every time but also we want to streamline a little bit more, let's say the web service and the way that we, we set it up because we have to harmonize more the, the services that are being used from those RIs, from those blue data infrastructures to be able to get to the, to the point that we can have a common data discovery and access. Uh, one thing is also in there is semantics that we want to uh, look at semantic brokerage, make it possible to speak one language and of course, we all speak Marinish, but we have to turn it into something which is also, let's say, for the computer is uh, unique. And, and that means uh, common vocabularies and then uh, you know, ontologies and uh, et cetera, let's say, mapping between vocabularies to be able to speak one language for the computer in machine actionable processes. 
Also, another thing that, uh, that we've come across is that so far we are working with, uh, let's call it uh, packages of data that are already pre-defined. So you discover and you, and you lift, more or less, you pull a string and you get the data set, which is already there. But of course, there's also a lot of processes they need subsetting. That means that you need slicing. And that's something that's another challenge. And we see that many RIs are working in this direction, making also subsetting services possible. And that's something that uh, also in this project we want to do in a more harmonious way to see what we can learn from each other and then apply it and then adding a subsetting facility to this, uh, to this service of Blue Cloud. Another thing is we want to um, yeah, work further on the Blue Cloud theory, so give it more fun functionalities. And I won't go too deep in there because that's uh, Lino will go deeper. Um, and also we want to develop, let's say, more uh, virtual labs and uh, and that is also that something that will come back later. And finally, we're adding something new, which is workbenches, because we learned from uh, several of the projects in Copernicus and Amonet that there's, a, and also in others, by the way, of course, that there is a big need for so-called aggregated validated data collections, and especially for essential ocean variables. So that you have big collections, which are being updated regularly, but they, they are really, let's say, completely validated according to the latest quality standards, and also harmonized. And as such, they are building blocks, in fact, for further research, but also for, say, for Copernicus, for Amonet, and also for uh, the DTO, the Digital Twin of the Ocean. And the ambition in the Blue Cloud is, in fact, to uh, become part of such a factory. You can call it a factory because it's really a factory working workflow that you want to set up. In goes, let's say, data coming from different resources, and out comes a completely integrated, coherent, data collection and then in a, in in a cycle let's say every three months or every month that's being updated and then you really have let's say a, an operational and robust uh, system which then can really support the dto and others that uh, are looking for this so that's one i would say a, a major challenge in this project but also something that we will achieve and we have three and a half years for doing this or four years so that's something that we really will work on and we are not alone in this because we work together with Amonet, we will work together with Copernicus, and also we work together with the DTO in this to, to make this happen. And also we work together with many other projects. There were already several main mentioned, let's say, in Synergy program, but everybody is in fact going forward in this direction. Okay, I will leave it with this. Tomorrow we go deeper in uh, technology, and now I want to uh, invite uh, Lino to take his part, and I hope I didn't take too much uh, of his, uh, I didn't cut you too much of your grass, no. sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Okay. This is the last, uh, you know, introduction that you will see before the coffee break. And now, uh, I mean, I will give you some highlights of the platform of the Blue Cloud VRD that we built and that we will evolve during the, this project. So, um, so first of all, the way we decide, you know, to build the Blue Cloud VRE, I mean, it is a system of systems. So it is not intended to be a closed environment, but it's an open environment that is contributed by several infrastructure and marine infrastructures that contribute to their own services that we federate all together and made accessible through a common platform. So by definition, the Blue Cloud VRE is extensible and we will extend you know, it with the services that you know, the, a larger community that we have in Blue Cloud 2026 you know, will provide. So it's a platform that intends you know, to support all your activities, not, not necessarily by replacing you know, your own tools, 
but by integrating them and making them part of a platform that is able to make you know them accessible in a proper way in an efficient way on a large cloud computing infrastructure and it's open in the sense that we, everything that we we do when we integrate a new technology in the platform is intended to respect you know the open science practice so we will help you and we will provide you support to make your tools your services uh, your applications you know ready to be exploited in, uh, in open access and promote open science uh, so in which way you know we believe that we contribute to the promotion of open science you know that open science is about all the life cycle of science starting from the collection of data to the storage of this data in a proper way to the integration of software in the platform, to the execution of a complex workflows and party lines to generate new data products that then enter you know, in this research life cycle. All these steps are possible through the Blue Cloud VRA, and all these steps you know, try to enable the principle that are you know, at the basis of open science. So anytime you publish a new data set, make accessible the data set, or register new tools in the infrastructure, execute a pipeline. We collect all the information and we, in such a way that we collect all the provenance information, in such a way that all the steps that you perform can be repeated, can be reproduced, and you are able to reuse and share, you know, what you do with your colleagues or in an open access manner with the, the entire community. So you will see that you know there are several ways of sharing your products, starting from your research team. So you will work using an infrastructure as you know a standalone environment, and where you will collaborate with your research uh, teams, you know to um, you know to refine and prepare you know the research products. And when you will be ready, you know, you will make them open to the rest of the consortium and then to the, to the community in general. So this platform, this is why we say, you know, we support effective sharing. And to do so, we adopt, you know, as much as possible website, you know, as a service approach. That means that everything that you do will be possible through a user interface, you know, uh, and so a, a human that access the user interface on the, on the web or through APIs that you will be able to, to use, you know, programmatically from your own application. <clears throat> Clearly everything is a standard. So every, uh, and so these APIs are compliant with the standard regulation and we apply economy of scale to reduce, you know, the operational cost of the infrastructure. So overall the Blue Cloud VRD, we can say it's just one place one place to perform discovery and access, one place to store, share, and preserve your data, your services, your tools, and one place to perform data analytics. And now very briefly, <clears throat> as you have seen from BIC, um, we integrated data discovery and, and access service that has been developed in Blue Cloud. It is a service that allow you to search uh, for data collections, uh, by using, you know, free search or geographic and temporal criteria. Then at the second stage, instead you can uh, drill down your research to identify specific data sets at the granular level. And again, you know, by refining your research. Then, you know, when you have identified the, the data sets that you want to collect, this can be put in a basket and collected by the platform automatically that will execute, you know, all the, um, preparation of the data that you ask, you have identified, and then you can download, if you, if you wish, on your own desktop or your own premise, or you can push it towards you know, the Blue Cloud VRE. In such a way, automatically, you can then process these data sets that you have collected you know, through the Blue Cloud VRE platform. In terms of uh, storage, we provide you know, two basic services, let me see. Then you will, <clears throat> I mean, there will be training and we will explain exactly how to exploit them. But in general, we deliver two different types of storage 
behind the two services that we call workspace and data space. All of them support, you know, it's like a file system. So you, you, you have a directories and files that are, uh, uh, that are accessing, you know, through the cloud. They are completely fault tolerant. Uh, the support, you know, are completely replicated. Um, automatically, the data are encrypted when stored on the cloud and decrypted when you access this data. And automatically, the data are compressed when you store them and decompress when you access them. So from, from the user, from uh, you know, the researcher point of view, you will never, you don't need to deal with the, the details, but everything is done by, by the platform. At the same time, uh, the, all the data uh, and products that you store are automatically versioned. This means that uh, anytime you upload a new data set with the same name in your area, this creates a new version. Um, while the previous version still remain accessible with the, a persistent identifier. So in this way, we collect you know, all this provenance of, uh, in the evolution of the data sets, and the process that you execute can be repeated exactly with the exact version of the data that you use the first time. Uh, as I said, we automatically generate provenance. So you don't need to care about, you know, when you integrate a software, you run a, me a method, this is done automatically by the Blue Cloud VRA. And overall, you can share your data sets and your tools and your methods and, you know, with other colleagues. And when you share an information, you share with all the provenance, with all the information that we collect automatically. There are differences in, in terms of behavior and efficiency of the different storage. Um, we will uh, guide you in the exploitation of the platform, you know, according to your needs, to the needs of your uh, specific use case in the, in the context of a project. So, um, you know, this is all that we will support you during the project. In terms of um, uh, environment, this is clearly a computing platform. So you can execute your process, you can integrate your code, and you can execute them in this cloud <clears throat> infrastructure that is behind the Blue Cloud VRA. Uh, we integrate several technologies already. Clearly, you can exploit the notebooks. You can exploit R Studio if your researchers uh, work with R, or you can exploit the analytics engine that is, you know, an output computing engine that we named, you know, uh, we call it, you know, data miner that support the execution of any script or, or, or a piece of code in any language on our computing uh, farm. And uh, it's not only a matter of technology, by the way. It's, uh, I mean, we provide a notebook, but you know that the notebook environment, you know, you, you may find it also, I don't know, in Google or not on Amazon. But the way we provide it, it is tailored to your needs. So we pre-configure the environment with all the libraries, with all the information, that you, all, all, all the setup that you need to execute your experiment in such a way that when you log in and open a notebook, it's already configured and it's ready to be exploited by your community, by your users. And the same for our studio and for the analytics uh, platform. At the end of your process, you can publish in a catalog the service that you integrate or the pipeline or, or the workflow that you executed. <clears throat> so the Blue Cloud VAV is the way, you know, we are supporting the marine community in the context of, the, the, of this project uh, 2026. We, we will clearly evolve and further develop this environment. So first of all, we want to exploit better the fact that the infrastructure is multi-site, so it's distributed in different location. And so we will work you know, uh, on uh, active passive cross-site replication and distributed processing across the site. This is you know, very technical in terms of uh, uh, computing execution. You know, this will be uh, part of the work package five work. Um, we will expand 
uh, the, the Federation strengthen you know, the collaboration with the GI that we already have, with the WICA, with the EODAT, with the Jericho Core, and we will integrate the services that are delivered by other projects like GIA, ACE, I imagine, and FERIS. Uh, overall, <clears throat> we have you know, quite ambitious goal in terms of uptake. In Blue Cloud, we had you know, 1,300 users, uh, researchers exploiting the Blue Cloud VLA. In Blue Cloud 2026, we want to triplify more or less you know, this number in terms of uh, uh, researchers. And clearly, we will continue to promote and ensure uh, you know, the EOSC integration. So since you know, the environment is already available since day one of, the, of this project, you can visit bluecloud.differsense.org. You can register. When you register, you don't need to create another digital identity. You may use you know, the same, uh, your academic, or your you know, preferred you know, uh, digital identity. And this is possible because we integrated, um, we are part of the EOSC Federation or Digital Identity Federation. So when you register, you use an EOSC service, again, you know, transparent, you, you, will, you will not notice it, but you, know, you will become part of the, uh, of the overall EOSC community. Then you can access the Blue Cloud 2026 uh, virtual laboratory. This is a virtual laboratory that we use, we will use as main repository of all documents of the project. And so you will find these slides, for example, the presentation from today, all the material and all the official deliverable times and so forth. You can also start exploiting the Blue Cloud Lab. The Blue Cloud Lab is an open access environment that we created to support you know, researchers. So you can join it for free, you know, after that you have registered to Blue Cloud VLA, and you can exploit the services that are accessible through Blue Cloud Lab. You can also explore the existing uh, uh, virtual laboratories that we created for the demonstrators, even those are open access clearly. And uh, there is all the documentation in the virtual laboratory that you may use, and clearly, you know, we provide support to all of you if needed, when needed. Uh, finally, <clears throat> clearly, we will expand the Blue Cloud VLA. So when you are ready, you know, we will support the creation of a virtual laboratory specific for your research activities in the project. So the platform that we use supports the dynamic creation of virtual laboratories. So we can create a virtual laboratory, configure it just for your group of people, and you can start using it you know, uh, just a day after that you ask, you know, for the creation of a virtual laboratory. So just one information, as we have seen, you know, the Blue Cloud, the ADE runs on differscience.org. Um, DefersScience is a digital infrastructure, is an infrastructure managed by CNR. And currently is, is located in four different sites. One is here in Pisa, in the data center that we own and we manage. And then we have three other sites in Italy managed by GAR, that is the Italian and REL. <clears throat> Overall, it provides access to a bit less than 3,600 CPU cores. Uh, but you know, we have a path of evolution already defined. For example, I put you know, the numbers for, for just for the PISA site. So today we run here in our data center, uh, that is uh, a number of 1,624 CPUs that we, and then we make them accessible, you know, through, uh, to the users via, you know, the environment like the Blue Cloud VLA. In April, we will put in production the resources that we have already in our pre-production, we are finalizing the testing and validation of the new computing resources. So in April, we will roll out those resources. So we will double the number of uh, computing power, and clearly storage and so on. Um, and this will allow to support, you know, 
more complex use cases, clearly. But generally, we, there will be another step that is already in our uh, roadmap. We are already starting you know, the action to acquire new resources. And we will reach you know, 5,000 CPUs here in PISA. And then by the end of the year, we will double this number again. So this thanks to the fact that the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure powering the Blue Cloud VLA is, is different science, is part of the Italian roadmap on uh, uh, digital infrastructures. And so it sustains already the other F3 research infrastructure, other European projects and national and international initiatives. And so by making economy of scale, you know, we can grow this environment and continue you know, to support our communities. And clearly also for this reason, we can assure you know, two additional years of operation of all, everything that we integrated during the project after the end of, a, of the project. <clears throat> Finally, you know, just one slide that is the one that also used by Dick. So this environment, we, we design it you know, to support the collaboration. So we need the clearly feedback and your exploitation of the environment. We support sharing of all type of research products. And we promote open science, making your research products reusable, reproducible. And that's you know, complete my uh, short introduction. And clearly tomorrow, you know, in the context of the work package description, you will get more and more information about the technologies and the, and the way it will evolve during the project. So thanks. Thanks, Dick. Thanks, Lino. Okay, so we are ready for a short break. Um, you can have a coffee in the same room where we, we had lunch. We'll be back at four. And I really uh, invite you to come back also those online. Uh, we will have also Pierre Bahurel, the CEO of Mercator Ocean, who will contextualize uh, the Blue Cloud project in the framework of the DTO, uh, plus uh, uh, Henning Senangsen from the Aquain project and uh, and Tostetano is rushing here. So we we'll conclude with the, uh, the next session who will look at the exploitation uh, of the blue cloud um, assets. So enjoy uh, your 30 minute copy and let's start again at four here. Thank you. Hello, sorry to interrupt online. We don't hear the sound from uh, the venue. Thanks. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Can you hear us now? Yes, very good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So welcome back, everybody, uh, to those online as well. So we are now dedicating the last hour of today's meeting to uh, introduce some of the aspects of exploitation, training, synergies, and long-term vision for Blue Cloud, and we'll do so as well with the help of some speakers and experts uh, who will be with us for the next hour. So just to set the scene, um, when writing the proposal and leveraging on the uh, activities performed over the last three years, uh, we highlighted the important synergies that we had established with uh, uh, different initiatives, and of course, uh, this will be the starting point of the future work with relates to exploitation again of blue cloud solutions has has been 
mentioned many times in the presentations uh, by my colleagues before, uh, we really want to uh, ensure that the solutions are used, exploited, are reusable, are interoperable, and the only way to do so is testing it with uh, colleagues from other infrastructures, from other projects, is checking whether this is uh, uh, useful, what can be customized, and having them uh, on board as much as possible on the Blue Cloud work plan. We have identified some areas of cooperation uh, which are still valid and they mirror also what was said uh, in the first half of the meeting today by the by Nicolas uh, Segebar, by Michel Schupp, and by the, um, uh, the other speakers that will come uh, later. So uh, one big area where we will be looking at cooperation is open science. We have identified some uh, project initiatives. There are already new uh, started, like the Aqua Infra project, which are not part of this, uh, of this uh, uh, picture. Uh, <clears throat> another uh, field of activity is EOSC, as we mentioned, really the, the core uh, EOSC uh, activities and, and, and projects. So uh, we mentioned Thanks, Federico, for yes. supporting <laughs> all of this. Ah, no. Stop sharing. Thanks. <laughs> Grazie Federico. <laughs> Uh, wait, let me find the proper slide deck. And here we are. Okay, sorry. So I, I was saying that we, we have identified some major um, areas uh, where to look at for partnership and collaboration. The first one is open science, where we have listed a series of initiatives, but we know there are already more. Uh, that are not included in this uh, image uh, and that we will look at. One is the Aqua Infra Initiative. Uh, then there is all the EOSC related um, framework, which means really the technical framework. So um, we have, uh, of course, uh, teams uh, in the project who are part of those task forces and working groups in EOSC that are building the core functionalities of EOSC. So um, the work with them will be done with respect to the technological integration and to make sure also that the experience that um, we have is shared uh, in, as a matter of best practices to then move on towards a new unified open science ecosystem. Um, then there is of course the framework of the digital twins. And again, um, we'll, uh, we have listed that the project that we're running and that are running, trying to build uh, digital twins of the oceans or uh, for biodiversity. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, the next uh, speakers who will dive into the um, European uh, digital twin of the oceans. And last but not least, the international uh, dimensions. So we, again, uh, we, uh, we aim at reaching communities outside 
Europe with the training activities that we will implement, with the dissemination activities, the scientific dissemination that we will implement, just looking at the IOD network. We have IEEE colleagues today with us, with Power that we've mentioned, and Goose, of course, all the Goose community, community via the Eurogoose uh, colleagues, uh, part of the project. <clears throat> Something has already started. So uh, on Wednesday, I'll introduce Blue Cloud to the Aqua Infra kickoff meeting. So that's the first way to synergize. And then we are planning a joint meeting, a collaborative one, really uh, a technical one, uh, to un understand the, the technical aspects of the project and uh, start working uh, with them uh, uh, following, let's say, each other's uh, from now on. Then uh, Blue Cloud has been invited at the World Ocean Summit that will take place in Lisbon on the 27th of February. It's a, a, a worldwide event organized by The Economist, so it's a very nice opportunity and we'll meet there a very uh, diverse group of stakeholders, a lot of industrial players in the ocean uh, and oceanographic and observational ecosystem, a lot of uh, uh, research uh, institutes. I know colleagues from Hub Ocean and NOC the National Oceanographic Center will also be there, maybe others and I've missed. So it's a, it's a good opportunity uh, for visibility there. And <clears throat> we have also been invited to present uh, Blue Cloud at the Marco Bolo uh, project, uh, who is working on the um, uh, coastal observation, biodiversity uh, observation. So it's a new project. We have partners uh, who are members of the Marco Bolo uh, Consortium, including uh, Seascape and the Amodnet Secretariat uh, colleagues. So we will also be uh, attending that, uh, that kickoff. So something very concrete again. Then you have heard about the Training Academy, on which we really rely a lot, because we have understood that, I mean, uh, it's a strategic training new uh, scientists and new um, engineers on, on the resources provided is, uh, is fundamental. So in the project, we will uh, do so uh, with the uh, strategic and, and fundamental help of Eurogoose and IEEE colleague who are the leaders of the specific task. Uh, I, I'm just presenting this uh, at a high level. It will be discussed tomorrow uh, on Wednesday during the work package six uh, meeting. But we have uh, thought I mean, uh, of building a, a training academy that provides a mix of uh, resources, assets, and a mix of methodology to pass the, the message and educate and uh, grow up, let's say, users of the Blue Cloud services. So there will be a specific line of uh, training uh, activities dedicated to fair data practices. And this is uh, where um, uh, the, the, the majority of the effort, let's say, will be uh, brought with respect to the way we um, handle and collaborate with the data providers. And that's where I believe also the, um, the inputs you can give to the EOSC and the verification ecosystems that they're trying to build are really uh, relevant. And then there is another set of activities that are all related to training and teaching how to use the services, the products, the applications, uh, the data sets developed by Blue Cloud within Blue Cloud and possibly in other uh, contexts. So we will have a series of training dedicated to the workbenches, another one to the um, virtual labs uh, and uh, on the VRE. Uh, this, of course, was the, is, the, is, the, is the plan, the high level plan, and we need all of you to uh, shape it and contribute uh, to, to it. In terms of further exploitation, uh, there is also this uh, DTO task force that is part of work package two because we wanted it to be really linked to the um, work that will be done with respect to uh, increasing the fairness of the data sets that are provided by the data discovery and access services and work with the data providers in this direction. Uh, we realized that uh, we needed a contact point with the other project working particularly in the, on, for the digital twins. And that's why we have set up this uh, uh, task force. It will be led by Mercator Ocean again with a, a contribution for, from these partners, so CNR, FMR, Blitz, CGI, Seascape, exactly because it will be both a technical uh, interaction and also strategic and political interactions 
to ensure that uh, the long-term vision, let's say the long-term outcomes uh, of what Blue Cloud is, uh, is building and what the other projects are building uh, is, are um, aligned as most as, uh, as possible. Again, this will be uh, discussed uh, as part of work package two at a high level, but then I know that uh, uh, Mercator colleague will, uh, will take an action and there will be a specific group working uh, towards this task to ensure that uh, it's taken forward uh, by the end of the project. Okay, with that, I now leave the floor to um, uh, Mercator Ocean colleagues. Unfortunately, we just got a message from Pierre Bahurel who is busy and blocked in a ministerial meeting, but we have Alain uh, Arnaud with us, which yes. invite, thanks, thanks Alain. Thanks. Um, if she could authorize me to, yes. to share my video and uh, okay. Yeah. Can you hear me at least? Yeah. <coughs> we can hear you. Uh, yeah, okay. I cannot share my video because I'm not authorized by the uh, uh, whatever. No, um, I've tried to share my at least my presentation. Right now, uh, I stop sharing. Uh, yes. No. Yes, we can. Okay. And do you see that in the good mode, viewer mode? Yeah. I can. I'm checking also with the uh, participants online if everything works. Yes, it works. Great, thanks. Over to you, Alan. Okay, thanks a lot. You may have also the video, I don't know if it's activated or not, whatever. Um, so sorry about that, as you said, Pierre is, is involved in a, in a meeting and we, we still are blocking it. And it's still good news because it's a meeting that uh, was more or less originated by this, uh, this DTO activity and the conversion of, of Mercator International in a, Intergovernmental organization, so it's uh, it's it's good for for the community. So um, let's say I'm going just to, to set the framework of what this EU DTO uh, with some very um, basic uh, let's say considerations. One of them will be said, let's say that it's European context. So this was already described uh, in, in, uh, before, and also the mission ocean. Uh, by Nicola and you, but uh, just a few a few points, let's say. So first of that is like, we had this uh, this kind of uh, of order from uh, from the Commission from Ursula von der Leyen asking for this uh, this digital twin to uh, to connect European assets. This was also confirmed by uh, by the, the French uh, President Emmanuel Macron during this Brest summit. So in uh, in last February, so um, it was one year from now. So we had, we have been working very hard on, on this, in order to start making this 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 DTO European DTO uh, uh, something concrete. So in order to do that, one of the basic points to to drive this approach was to be a, a collaborative initiative. This digital twin of the ocean has to be open. It doesn't to be to be a, um, a project that is uh, let's say fixed like uh, any uh, development like for instance the, the, the operational project may have some time with a, a unique platform and, 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 and let's say a simple uh, service on that in this case it's really something where everyone can bring his application and can receive something from that so we have uh, in this approach from the beginning uh, we are going to detail that a bit uh, later on and it's also uh, conceived from the beginning as a tool to preserve uh, the uh, sustainable ocean and the marine beauties biodiversity. So we are really focusing on those uh, two main pillars that are the fact to have an open platform, a collaborative initiative, and the fact to be using that for a sustainable ocean and the preservation of marine biodiversity. The second point to that, I would say, is much more uh, technical in, in the concept. Uh, you heard most of you already about uh, the digital twin of the ocean with this idea of having, uh, you know, this very high resolution uh, 
copier of the ocean, a kind of matrix approach I'm always telling, on which you, you, we, we get all, everything we, we have uh, uh, in terms of observation from in situ, from satellite. We use also the models and we try to have in, in the computer this, uh, this real time uh, copy of what is uh, available uh, today in the ocean. Of course, we know that you are lacking information. This won't be uh, as accurate as it should be, but it's a it good start in order to have this, uh, this idea of this, um, this digital twin. What we are doing to do that, what we are using to do that is, is first of all, to be constructing of all the European assets that have been mentioned also until now, uh, gathering together information from a monet, from the Copernic Marine Service, from the digital project, and Blue Cloud was one of the central points on that in, in its approach. So uh, from the beginning, we want to put together all those assets into a uh, let's say unified, it's a bit uh, too much, but at this interoperable architecture to easy access to those data. The second part of that, that is a bit much more, more, more technological driven, is a part on the technological leap. We need to have here uh, a possibility, despite, let's say, the the missing data uh, that uh, we may have for a, a, a very accurate knowledge of what is the ocean. We have to try to use the new advance in terms of artificial intelligence to have some kind of hybrid models mixing what we can get from the, the best from the AI and the best of what our physics or uh, biological model already existing. So this supported by high performance computer should enable us to have a more accurate representation of the status of the ocean and not only in the physics but also in the biochemistry and in the biodiversity of this ocean and the third point is something that is for me even more important apart from this technological aspect there is a part on building on the marine community and going to explain you that with one very um, visual approach of what is a digital tree uh, you know, we start from our, uh, our dear and, and real ocean, uh, that is really the, uh, uh, um, an ecosystem, uh, very complex. And what you are trying to do from the beginning is to be able to do some modelization of the ocean. So this is, uh, let's say, the digital oceanography and all that is existing for, for, for decades now. So what we have done from that, and this is uh, the definition in the literature of a model, is to be able to uh, gather information from those, um, uh, those uh, in-situ measurements, from the satellite measurement, to run every uh, now and then a model simulating uh, the circulation, the temperature, and its evolution at a defined resolution. This is so the model. The digital shadow is much more, I would say, the, the matrix, a matrix approach I was mentioning before. You have the possibility, thanks to real-time acquisition of all this information and a kind of living model that is uh, in the computer, like a, a, a briefing one, you know, uh, with a heart beating, you have the possibility to maintain in real time this, this model. And uh, this is just in one direction. You get information from the ocean and you update this, uh, this digital model here. So it's what is called a, a shadow for this reason. And uh, in opposition of what is done, for instance, in the industry, when we talk about, uh, about uh, a digital twin, in this case, you don't have a feedback loop toward, uh, let's say, the, as the original assets. And that's important because when we talk about uh, digital twins in the industry, you always have this feedback loop telling that, okay, if I can detect some, uh, something happening in my digital representation of, for instance, my engine, I have the possibility, thanks to a predefined uh, procedure, to, for instance, reduce the speed of the engine, increase the cooling or whatever, in order to act on that. And for us, for the ocean, this is very complicated. We cannot do that easily because basically I've never seen a computer able to act directly on the ocean, maybe with some uh, cooling system, but uh, not really uh, important at, uh, at the global scale. So what is important to have the possibility to act on the ocean directly is to involve the marine community 
from this advance that the digital twin can procure. So this is uh, this following slide, slide sorry. We expect uh, from this advanced knowledge of uh, the ocean that all the project together, like Blue Cloud, uh, integrated uh, in, in this digital twin of the ocean can procure. We expect from that, and for new advances, like for instance, the possibility to run some scenarios, some what if scenarios to know what will happen if we if we do something. Uh, we expect to that to have more um, accurate, let's say, um, decision coming from the citizens, the private sector, and, and the policy maker in order to act on the ocean. So this is really where the, the digital twin is original, and it's where uh, the digital twin needs a marine community to a wider extent from citizen to private sector to, of course, uh, uh, um, let's say the scientist, but also the policy maker in order to have this possibility to act on that. So the digital twin has to be inclusive at this uh, larger scale, including the policy makers and all the sectors involved in the blue uh, economy, industry, and knowledge. So that's a bit the representation of, of, of that here. Everyone is bringing his own knowledge, his own information, and recovering from the digital twin itself some additional information coming from the other, from the possibility to run the project to, to, to simulate the future decision on this twin. So the first step for doing that, apart from setting up the different uh, programs that was described in the uh, in the uh, previous presentation from the um, uh, the Mission Ocean, was uh, in last February to run uh, to uh, April, sorry, to run the, the first digital ocean forum on which we gather 70 partners uh, to start to think about all from the different aspects, let's say from the technological aspect, from the um, biodiversity aspect and from uh, the uh, user aspect, the digital twin can uh, evolve. And this came to uh, a few first requirements that will be uh, developed uh, later on, but on which we see that we need to have, we have a lot of to, to, to do in order all together to create the digital twin, but starting from very good basis in terms of uh, uh, interoperability, collaboration, taxonomy, uh, uh, intelligent use, I would say, of, of artificial intelligence, and to preserve uh, important aspects, for instance, the Catholic part uh, by the design itself of the DTO, in order really to respect uh, what will be done here for the best of our ocean. And this is ending my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mike. Thank you very much, Alain. And now we'll uh, dive into the, some of the projects that Alan introduced. So I leave the floor to Marina Tonani. Can you all? Sorry. <laughs> okay, so Thank you very much for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to explain you how the Edito project, uh, Edito Infra and Edito Model Lab are structured. So first of all, thanks to Alan who set the floor for my presentation and gave to all of us the background about the digital twin of the ocean. So I will... Uh, okay. Uh, I will... Uh, uh, very briefly go through my first slide because uh, we have already discussed about this with Nicola, Nicolas Segebart and also with uh, Alan. So what uh, uh, the European Commission is trying to achieve with the digital ocean is to have a core infrastructure 
that is conceived as a public good and service to support the implementation of the uh, marine grid deal, grid, um, green deal objectives. And so there are several uh, initiatives at European level uh, committed to study and protect the marine ecosystem. And uh, uh, what uh, is the complexity is that we need to try to work together uh, and uh, there is uh, therefore the need to have uh, powerful tools that are uh, user driven and are fit for the digital age in order to strengthen the ocean knowledge and the ocean management. So integrating a wide range of data and models with cloud infrastructures, HPC, artificial intelligence and services. And uh, for doing this, uh, we have uh, the European Digital Twin of the Ocean. So here I'm explaining the acronym of the project, just to be very clear from the beginning. And uh, it is uh, constituted of two different projects, Edito Infra for developing the infrastructure that uh, is needed for the digital twin of the ocean and edit model lab for developing the uh, models and the tools that uh, can be made available uh, through this uh, infrastructure. In terms of the timeline, the two projects are a different duration. Edito Infra uh, has a duration of two years. Uh, had a head start compared to Edito Model Lab and started in October 2022. Uh, we had the kickoff in November 2022 and the meeting, uh, the project will uh, finish in October 2024. Uh, we will have the uh, kickoff of Edito Model Lab that started in January this year, uh, next week, and uh, it will last three years. So there is uh, a part of overlap with Edito, between Edito Infra and Edito Model Lab, but then there will be the opportunity for Edito Model Lab to benefit of the infrastructure developed by Edito Infra before uh, the end of the project. And this is really important to uh, be uh, fully integrated. Uh, now, in terms of Edito Infra, Edito Infra, uh, is run by Mercator Ocean and Viliz that are representing two existing European assets. So one is the Copernicus Marine Service and the other one is Emodnet because as said by Nicolas this morning, uh, this morning at the beginning of this uh, kickoff, we start relying on the existing European assets. Uh, the budget of the project is uh, almost uh, 3 million euro and uh, as I said, uh, has just started and will finish by uh, October 2024. It's, a British, it's not a long project, it's just two years, and uh, is, uh, um, uh, is as the aim to build, to capitalize on existing EU assets, and is co-designed with uh, uh, the European directories of RTD, Mare, DEFIS, and CONNECT. The main four objectives of uh, Edito Infra are to integrate and uh, expand the existing European assets and the capabilities uh, to develop uh, public infrastructure uh, that are the digital backbone for the um, digital twin of the ocean. Uh, and to support the implementation of the EU legislation uh, of the uh, mission restore our ocean and waters and uh, its objectives uh, supporting the mission lighthouses. Uh, as the aim to develop the architecture, so as to propose the adequate architecture for integrating the editor infrastructure with the uh, Destination Earth initiative, and uh, as the uh, objective to contribute to the United Nations Decade of Ocean uh, for the Science and Sustainable Development, and so there is a link with uh, uh, existing initiatives like uh, DITO. Uh, Edito Model Lab instead is uh, as a much bigger consortium. It's a project of uh, 7 million euro for three years with uh, 14 partners that are coming from uh, nine different countries and uh, all the countries and the partners are represented in the map on these slides. Uh, these uh, partners have expertise in terms of ocean modeling from global scale to coastal, 
for physics, uh, biochemistry, and marine environment. Uh, they have expertise in supercomputing, uh, in artificial intelligence, applied to ocean application, in software development, and uh, model and tools uh, uh, co-development. In operational oceanography, with a strong link with Copernicus Marine, Ocean Predict, and uh, the uh, UN Decade. And uh, as also a component for the user applications for the intermediate and uh, final users. The project Edito Model Lab is organized in uh, three blocks. One is for the innovation, that is for uh, developing the components and uh, producing the reference data set. So it's based on models and on uh, artificial intelligence based emulators. Uh, a second block that uh, is for the integrations, for the integration of the components to build the DTO model suite. And uh, uh, here, so is where the, uh, we manage the source code and uh, provide uh, to the user the access uh, to the models. And then there is a third block that is for the user application where uh, the uh, needs uh, uh, are defined to uh, design what needs to be developed and uh, produced. And all of these relies uh, on the public DTO uh, platform. There is also a communication and uptake uh, uh, work package, and uh, this is all uh, in uh, um, for developing demonstrators for the uh, lighthouses. And uh, here we can see an example of interaction between the two components, so the Edito Model Lab and the Edito Infra. So here we have uh, uh, users as beta testers and as uh, model developers in Edito Model Lab that uh, uh, can co-develop uh, in uh, the same environment, uh, models and uh, tools. And uh, they can uh, re use some uh, interfaces and uh, uh, workflow uh, tools in order to uh, submit uh, jobs using the resources that are on the infrastructure. And then they can retrieve job information uh, from the uh, infrastructure that can uh, um, be provided to the user's interface. And uh, at the end, you get some uh, workflow information with uh, graphics and validation that are uh, made available uh, to the users. Uh, this is an example just to really try to show and uh, schematize what could be the interaction. Of course, it's not uh, exhaustive, <laughs> it's just uh, a small example of it. And uh, what we are trying to achieve with the digital twin, so what we have, what we have, we already said several times during today. So we have already several European assets that provide information about the sea from different uh, uh, point of view and in a different way. What we need, we need uh, to have uh, to develop tools for make all these assets and this information interoperable. And uh, we need also to optimize the models and the tools that we are using and to build a robust infrastructure that can be easy accessible. So what we want, so we want a digital twin that has a component for the data lake where we can integrate existing or new validated data set we need an engine where we can increase the, uh, our modeling tools uh, capacity. And we need a component for the services where we can provide on-demand processing and modeling capacity. And what is really important is on-demand in terms of services. That is what makes uh, the difference compared to uh, some other um, existing assets. Assets And all of this needs to be trusted, validated uh, with documented information, uh, data set that are available for the digital twin of the ocean. As you can see, there is a lot in common with what we have been discussed before me by um, Dick Pasquale about uh, Blue Cloud. And uh, it's true, there is a lot in common with Blue Cloud. And now I'm trying to show in the next few slides how we can integrate and work together. Uh, so 
As I said, so Editor will provide a basic architecture for the interconnection of assets. And, uh, and now, I will, sorry, I click always. And uh, here we can see, so we, as I said, we will start with two uh, existing European assets that are uh, uh, Copernicus Marine and Emotnet, that are uh, the first data lake that are integrated in Edito Infra. Then uh, Edito Infra will set up a processing engine for running models with capability for artificial intelligence, machine learning, hybrid models, and different applications. Oops. And this will allow to integrate information about the marine environment. And we can integrate data. So we can, uh, in Edito Infra, can be integrated data and data lakes that comes from different sources and Blue Cloud can uh, be one of these. And uh, also the component of the virtual labs can be part of the engine. It doesn't mean that uh, what is Blue Cloud becomes uh, Edito Infra, I want to be very clear on this. Edito is just the infrastructure. It's like uh, building uh, train tracks, but uh, then you can run on it your own train without losing your identity. And I think that this is really key in the concept that is behind uh, building this public European infrastructure that uh, uh, we need to take uh, into consideration. And then this can be applied to different uh, uh, areas and uh, we can really provide the services that uh, are needed. But as I said, Edito Infra provides itself uh, the infrastructure and the infrastructure We'll start with some data lake and some uh, uh, engine and some services. But what is really key is the infrastructure and the API that will allow the interaction and the connection with all the components. And uh, it's a slightly different um, way of thinking where uh, instead of having, uh, for example, the uh, Blue Cloud catalog, the uh, Copernicus catalog, the user can build its own catalog, mixing what are the data of its own interest and also adding its own data that then can be public or not, but it's really a much more tailored and uh, uh, customized tool that uh, we hope will be fit for purpose for delivering the information that uh, uh, is needed for uh, uh, policy makers, scientists and citizens for uh, understanding and making decisions on the uh, marine environment. Thank you very much, Marina. It was really useful and we understand we are part of a bigger picture. So it will be fundamental uh, to liaise with this project and ensure we get the best and we, we fit the right uh, boxes. <laughs> okay, now uh, we learned about uh, another project that we will uh, closely collaborate with, which is Aqua Infra. And I call Enning uh, Sten Hansen, the coordinator of the Aqua Infra project who is online. To... Yeah, thank you very much, Sara. Yes, hi. I will try to share my presentation. Um, um, Sorry, I feel it's trouble. Uh, I'm not sharing. Uh, no, it's... Oh, something went wrong. Okay. It just it's a working. moment. Yeah. Is it working now? 
Yes, we see your screen. With a beautiful landscape and a PowerPoint presentation. And exactly. And yeah. that's your presentation. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much, Sana, and your uh, Blue Cloud Consortium for inviting me to have a short presentation of, about the Aqua Infra project. As you already mentioned, Sara, um, there's some com um, expectation from the commission that we are collaborating quite closely um, during the next uh, three, four years. And um, I really look forward to this. Um, we are 21 partners, much, much smaller than Blue Cloud. <laughs> um, but uh, but um, yeah, uh, that's... Uh, that's what we have went for. We are uh, have the, about a similar size of budget, uh, about eight million euro, and uh, it's running for four years. Um, we have the unhealthy ocean, seas, coastal, and inland waters. And uh, what can we do with this? Uh, we had the MSFD goal of uh, having good ecological status uh, by twenty twenty, but this is for sure not met at all in any countries, I, I, I think. So, um, uh, and uh, this is of course up to uh, the, the, the policy developers to uh, to make decisions in the direction of, uh, of having more sustainable uh, ocean seas and coastal waters. Uh, and uh, it's generally heard that uh, which kind of measures will be most beneficial to solve this uh, problem. Uh, there has been too much uh, uncertainty, and uh, uh, this has also been used uh, by the, the policymakers, uh, saying, "Yeah, but we are not totally sure that this uh, these actions will will make any difference, or it will not." So, um, so that there's clearly a need for for more uh, coherent research in the uh, in the uh, research community for ocean and fresh waters. First of all, we have generally separate research environment. We have laboratories for freshwater research, marine research center, department for policy, environmental policy analysis, etc. And these are not working so much together. Uh, we have domain-specific data repositories for marine data, freshwater data, socioeconomic data. We can just see, we have seen some during this uh, afternoon, Copernicus Marine Services, ISIS, uh, EMODnet. This is mainly for marine data. We have the wise freshwater, the also wise marine water. Uh, and then we have Eurostat. So, so all these uh, data silos are, are kept isolated. And um, it's also a general uh, position by most researchers, they prefer to keep their data for themselves because then nobody else can <laughs> publish within the same uh, research field. Uh, but uh, this is of course not fruitful for uh, solving the big challenges we have of uh, making the oceans and freshwater bodies um, um, uh, healthy again. There's also a general lack of holistic approach in modeling efforts where domain experts are using their own data and models. And all this together is a uh, really obstacle for having the, the, the vision first uh, stated in the uh, MSFD uh, directive, but then we have the, the, new, uh, the new vision for, for, for the 2030 uh, deadline in the uh, mission ocean. Um, the the aim of uh, of um, Aqua Info is to uh, develop a virtual environment. This is actually the case in all these kinds of projects. If it's in marine science or uh, chemistry or nuclear science, this has uh, been more or less a standard way of doing this. With fair multidisciplinary data and services to support marine and freshwater scientists and stakeholders, restoring healthy ocean seas coastal and inland water. And um, it, it's really our hope that it can be very easy to, uh, to uh, get access to the data uh, in, in a simple way, not to looking into a, a lot of uh, 
separate uh, repositories for freshwater data, marine data, socioeconomic data. <clears throat> uh, be because anyway, we are living in one whole world and uh, all water are more or less connected. There are a few isolated uh, lakes, but uh, generally all, uh, all water is connected. And uh, what's, what the activity is going on uh, on the land will also affect what is uh, the environmental status of the uh, oceans and seas. This is just a, a very uh, short uh, description of, uh, of the conceptual model we are dealing with. We have the, uh, a lot of existing data sources. We are not developing new data sources ourselves. We are building our infrastructure on what is already there. Uh, and then we will have some uh, facilities uh, facilities being developed to uh, to search for the right data and search across the marine freshwater environments and also uh, related socioeconomic data from uh, various uh, stable repo data repositories, for example, uh, Eurostat or other similar. Uh, and then we will have this uh, Aqua Infra interaction platform where we can have through uh, we will support interactive visualization and then models uh, based on different uh, um, developing environments, notebook services and uh, are very uh, popular these days, but uh, we do not know what will be the situation in four years after today. Um, but, but anyway, it's also very important here that we are developing a, a training platform I will come back to this because, uh, first of all, that uh, we can encourage uh, researchers to uh, really stimulate and further developing the FAIR principles, also stated in, in the um, European Open Science Cloud. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this is, of course, also the reason why the scientific communities are very deeply involved from, from day one. And uh, this is not only the, the partners, we will really extend to all the partnerships uh, in within uh, the, the marine uh, and freshwater uh, science areas. Um, as I said, that uh, we consider the water as one continuum. So we will be dealing with the data from source to uh, destination because restoring healthy ocean seas, et cetera, requires a holistic analysis of the activities, pressures, and impacts on ecosystems from the sources to the destinations. Um, and to facilitate this, uh, then the our uh, the Aqua Info Data Discovery and Access Service will search for, for these data seamlessly across borders and data repositories. Uh, and we will put a particular emphasis uh, on searching around river networks to identify critical activities and pressures and to estimate the cumulative pressure from a catchment or subcatchment. I think here we, are, we have a bit more focus on also the freshwater side than the, the uh, Blue Cloud project. Oh, what's going on? Okay, now. Um, and um, so, so uh, all the, 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 the tools we, we are developing uh, the, the, in this um, Aqua Infra Interacting Platform will have some uh, holistic approach to, uh, to modeling. It means that, uh, that uh, we are not only uh, working with uh, marine species in a specific area, but we are really focusing on, on uh, the, um, the whole um, chain from, from uh, the overall societal drivers, uh, leading to human activities, creating pressures and uh, changing the state of environment. And then at the end, having some impact on our well-being. We are all depending on the hoax, oh, sorry, on, on the ecosystem services being provided by, for example, the ma marine uh, ecosystems. And in that way, we can then find uh, appropriate uh, responses and measures uh, to change the, the oil drivers, to change the human activities. So um, we can hopefully reach this uh, uh, goal of um, healthy oceans by 2030. At least we can, uh, we can increase the, the uh, scientific uh, 
uh, knowledge behind the decision making. For this, we will have uh, a set of use cases uh, across Europe. Uh, we will have uh, one in uh, Finland, another one in in um, Latvia, another one in uh, the Kattegat uh, part of uh, the Baltic Sea, North Sea, then uh, North Sea and Elbe. Um, it's also, if you read here, that uh, we are also dealing with not only a specific sea area, but also with the uh, rivers, contributing with substances, uh, pollutions, uh, etc., from the inland waters. This is also a, a, in order to find out that uh, what can we actually do in order to um, restore the healthy oceans and seas. Um, of course, ESG is a central uh, part of, of this uh, project. Uh, we will ensure a seamless integration with ESG, mainly from two different perspectives. Uh, we, we will make use of the ESG services available from ESG Core, uh, and also uh, for, for the newly FAIR Core for ESG project. Um, we will act as a, a service provider by offering data and services to the wider research community uh, through ESG Exchange. Um, we will be, uh, we, uh, Aqua Inco Services will integrate with the ES Core AI for as well user uh, uh, as system to system authentication. Uh, I think this is a very easy way of starting actually using that one. And then of course, a very, very important part is that we'll promote this open and fair data being the new norm for research and increasing the awareness of and acknowledging using relevant ES services in the relevant communities. That's um, so, and that's of course, a very, very uh, important part of what, what we are doing. It is actually promoting this fair, promoting the, <clears throat> this new way of thinking on research instead of keeping your own data for yourself, but instead having the vision that, um, yeah, instead of have uh, one person have access to his own data or her own data, then all research have access to all data. That's um, the vision. Um, as I said, uh, we will have a lot of collaboration with other projects. Uh, uh, I have not listed them, them all here because it's, this will full the full pace, but uh, we will um, for sure uh, work together with partnerships and uh, uh, we will uh, attend different uh, events, etc. also to stimulate that. Uh, I can also tell that Sara told that they were, uh, Blue Cloud was invited to the Marco Polo and that's the same for, for us. So, so I think that we will meet in many, uh, uh, common uh, events uh, in, the, in the coming year, and um, and that this is of course um, um, this is of course uh, also stimulating for or, or a way of stimulating uh, our way of thinking of uh, using fair data. Thank you for your attention. I think I kept it for about ten minutes, and uh, we look forward to fruitful collaboration between Blue Cloud and Aqua Info. And here you can see the 21 partners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. And last but not least, we are very happy to have Tosta Tanua, who just arrived <laughs> from the airport, literally. So thanks, Tosta, for being with us. <laughs> Welcome. And I'll leave you to guide us through uh, well, uh, the recent lapses from Eurosea, but also I know you wanted to say something about relations with uh, the the observation yeah, systems. Yeah. Thanks. So, Tosted, one of our experts. And thanks, Pedro. Sorry, I feel so stupid today. No, no, it's, it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit complicated, I 
so hello everybody and thank you very much Sara and, and the team in Euro in Blue Cloud to, for inviting me here and I'm sorry I couldn't be here with you all this morning there were some hiccups in the in the travel arrangement going here so of course that gives me the freedom an advantage to say a lot of things that already have been said because I didn't know it was said so my name is Toste Tano. I am, am a chemical oceanographer at Guillemar Helmold Center for Ocean Research in Kiel in, in Germany. And I'm coordinating the EU 2020 project EuroSea that's about ocean observing and forecasting. I'm also co-chairing the Global Ocean Observing System and I'm gonna be here talking a little bit about exploitation and innovation between what Blue Cloud is doing and have been doing and I aspire to do and, and the observing system. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to start with very some sim very simple graphs here, and, and I like these graphs of, of the ocean observing value chain, and I think we can consider them a little bit more. So the lower one is, is something that's been published more than ten years now. That's from the framework of ocean observing, and, and the top one here is a little bit more recent, just three years old, uh, from the Goose Twenty Thirty Strategy. So let's start with it with it Goose Twenty Thirty Strategy one. So it really starts with the, with the requirements of, of the observing system. We need to figure out what is really the question that we want to have an answer on. And then we figure out if we want to answer that question, what do we need to measure? And that leads to the essential ocean variables. And we have to figure out what is the accuracy, precision, and, and space and time resolution of, of these observations. And then you have the next process here is actually processes. So that is the act of making the observations. And we have a number of different platforms and systems and instruments that can actually measure these essential ocean variables at uh, different uh, accuracy precision and, and the different systems have different pros and cons and we can make a mixture of those to reach what we actually set out to do. And then we're getting more into the blue cloud domain here, the outputs. So these are the data and, and data products that, that the system observing system can then deliver. And that will really need to the impacts. And that is really where we want to go. We want to have a positive impact or you know, some impact on society and on science and understanding. And most importantly, I will equally important is that this curvy snake here, it actually curves back. So it gives a feedback to the observing system. The lower graph there is really saying the same thing. It has a little bit more of detail in, in terms of the different observing systems and so on. Um, and the framework of ocean observing, which is a very important document for the observing community, is, is still very valid. And we're looking at the readiness level, and we you're well aware of readiness level concept. We, we take a little bit different take on that in the observing community, I think. But basically, we're moving from concept to a pilot to a major system. In a, in a recent paper, or, or actually a paper in, in, in review here by my PhD student, Nico Lange, we, we took that concept articulated in the framework of ocean observing and applied that to three different data products on ocean biochemistry chemistry, that's SOCAT, GLODAP, and Memento. I see SOCAT is featured in, in, in Blue Cloud, so I think you know about that. GLODAP is more interior ocean, and Memento is nitrous oxide and, and methane. We can apply this system on, on readiness level and see where we end up here. And SOCAT has pretty high readiness level, you know, seven is a major system. GLODAP is somewhere in the middle five, and Memento is, is actually has a little bit way to go there. But it's a good guide to, to move forward. Essential ocean variables, I mentioned that already. So that is something I think can guide the observing system. And also I think it should guide part of the, the data management and information output systems. So it enable us to look across different platforms and sensors to, to get to the information that we want, regardless on if we like ships or if we like gliders. And we need to have that fair system and, and the metadata that goes with that. So we know 
what attributes are of those data that we get. And reading uh, the proposal from Blue Cloud here, I, I'm very happy to see, I must say, the EUV workbenches, free workbenches, uh, focusing on, on different essential ocean variables. So this is really what we in the observing community are, are really keen on to work together with you, because we can make the observations and we kind of hand off to so it's a kind of data management system. But to get from there and have the fair data and get impact we need to work together. And I think this is an excellent, ex excellent example of, of, of doing that. The temperature and salinity one, your purification curve with nutrients and oxygen, and these small symbols here symbolizes each of them, one UV, and the ecosystem level UVs here. Uh, so I think this is a fantastic opportunity to work together towards impact uh, observing and, uh, and data. Another way of looking at the value chain is something here that's from the Marine Technological Society together with Goose and NOAA and others to see down there. We can see the market growth potential of the new blue economy. And the new blue economy is that part of the blue economy that provides information to the blue economy. Uh, so blue cloud will obviously sit kind of far right, maybe in the far right column here on information delivery and data. But nothing of that works if you don't have the observation coming into the system, maybe you don't have the requirement setting. And maybe as a comment to you, Marina, on your fantastic presentation of EDIDO, you said that you want the data, but if you want the data, obviously you have to have some observations and ideally some systematic observations, sustained observations, harmonized with well-known attributes of, of the data that goes in there. And that's really where your C and the observing community comes in. So that's a cool work here. And I think I, I like this, this plot a lot because it speaks to economy and it says, you know, market size and growth potential. Most uh, predictions estimate that the new blue economy will grow immensely in the next years. And I think that's reflected a little bit on that in the, in the funding schemes that we are all getting here. Uh, so I recommend if you haven't read that the background document from Marine Technology Society, I recommend you to do that. This is a really good one. And here are some numbers on the estimated value of the new blue economy. We're talking on billions of, of uh, euros for, for the US and Canada and United Kingdom. And I would like to see sometime, you know, a value of, of the European Union, the blue, new blue economy estimates here. Uh, this is another very fantastic uh, feature I, I see in, in, in blue cloud here to work along um, virtual labs for, for different areas. I don't want to go into that. I'm sure you already talked about it. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. But this is something there I think we can really work together. We have the observations. It leads into to a virtual lab where the scientists and anybody else that have a little bit of interest can work with the data and, and create, create extra value. So what I wanted to say basically is along the value chain. You have to have all the pieces of that chain in a good shape, the weakest link of the chain will determine how weak it is. And, and I think here we can work together. All of these here are, are key in, 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 in projects like Eurocy and, and others. Um, and here is a little graph from the European Ocean Observing System. Okay. It was published a few years ago. There's a new one coming up and, and Inga may be able to tell you more about that. But basically it is about creating that circular system that I just talked about in the value chain, where in the end, the results that we get from our output or impact can feed back into the observing system. And that's where we're really interested to see with Blue Cloud, what is the feedback into the observing system? Where do we have a lack of observations? Where are observations you know, not frequent enough or not spatially well covered enough or where uh, do we actually miss them or do we need a different kind of observing system or observations of, of different variable? Or do we have too many variables, too many observations of, of, of one particular thing? How can we optimize the observing system to really lead to impact together? So, so that's another thing that I think we can really work together on, on, on the feedback loop. You know, uh, how well did we set, you know, did we succeed in 
in answering those questions we should now turn, ask in, in the first place in the requirement setting. With that, I thank you for your attention. Thanks, Dustin. Actually, I must say you haven't said nothing that was said before. So, and and second, I must say you studied so well, Blue Cloud. I mean, you made really good connections, and that's exactly what we want. I mean, uh, uh, from you as experts. So, Tosse as as Mark and as Sarah will be with us uh, for the. Uh, for all the two uh, coming days, so exploiting as you can. Uh, the, the work package free meeting in particular is tomorrow morning, and then uh, there are the others as well. So we are even more proud to have you with us. That said, we are getting there. So <clears throat> we have uh, finished, let's say, the uh, presentations for today. But before you leave and before also the uh, colleagues online leave, if I manage to share again my presentation. Yes. So uh, I want... Can, we, can those online see? No, we can't see anything. No, but it's okay. I mean, it's it's more for those on, on, in the room. Actually, so I wanted just to make a little bit envy of the plans we have for tonight. So no, I'm I'm joking. So I really want to thank um, everybody for uh, staying uh, for uh, the entire day uh, the, today and for joining as well tomorrow. So the meeting has been recorded and the recordings will be shared as soon as possible. So give us uh, uh, some hours to process them, then we'll put, we'll put online as well as the presentations that you've seen today, and they will be publicly available. Tomorrow we have another dance agenda. So we'll start at nine and we'll go really work package by work package. So we, uh, we will start uh, working uh, concretely on the, uh, on the presentations, but I'll... Uh, and uh, at lunch time, so uh, at 12, we will also have our project officer, Antonio Ventura, who will connect and will guide us through uh, some uh, um, administrative and project management aspects that relate to the cloud. While at 1.15, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a closed meeting with our experts, so those that are here and those online. So the steering board members and the, the experts are invited to join. Uh, we'll also give you some food for those who are here so you, you won't starve. Uh, but we are exploiting uh, any minutes of these uh, meetings. So while well, I thank you very much all those online and I hope to see you again tomorrow. I'm also happy to welcome you all for tonight's gala dinner. So we are welcoming you in the beautiful uh, Palazzo dei Dodici, who is an historical building downtown in Pisa, it's in Piazza dei Cavalieri. It's a very, uh, really in the historical uh, center is uh, close to the Normale School. And we have added some um, indications on how to go there. So if you want to scan the QR code or take uh, the, the indications there, we meet there at eight. So uh, we give you now some time to, to rest and uh, brainstorm again on what was said. And uh, with that, uh, I thank you again on behalf of all the teams and let's meet uh, tonight and tomorrow from those who can't. Thank you very much and uh, see you later. And of course, a special thanks to the commission, to Nicola, Michelle, Antonio, and all those who were online.